I apologize. Because <laughs> it'll probably be a bit hard. Less than three. Okay, so she's starting out. She's pretty sad. I've got the volume up on my end. Uh, might not be as loud as we'd like, but it's up. Okay, she's pretty overwhelmed. Okay, there's real tears coming down her face. She's really crying. Um... I won't have, um, the chat on the screen because I can't read it right now. I also turned off all the alerts so I could talk. I'm sorry. I didn't think I would cry. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I wrote, I wrote it down. Because I didn't think, <laughs> I thought I wouldn't have anything to say. You know, I thought I'd freeze up when I went live, which I kind of have, but I didn't think I'd cry. Um, I wrote down what I want to say on stream today. I hope that's okay. Um, because I get really anxious when mm -hmm. talking about important things. Sure. Um, and I don't want to miss say anything. And I want to make sure that I'm saying everything I want to. And in order to do that, I wrote it down last night. Um, because I knew I would be like this. Um, and I knew I wouldn't be able to talk properly. So. I probably won't. I, again, apologize. I probably won't look up um, during the stream. I'll be reading on my phone, um, but I wanted to read this instead of tweet it because I wanted it to come from me, and I want you guys to hear it from me. It's really hard for me to talk about, but I feel like it's important for other people to hear it. I'm sorry, I'm scared. Okay. I'm gonna start reading. Shit, my. <laughs> I look a fucking mess. Um. Okay. I wanna start this by saying I wouldn't be here without Shelby. I was ready to disappear with this secret forever. I never knew that creators were allowed to talk about these kinds of things, and I guess I'm still new to it all. I just didn't feel brave enough, and I still don't, but her strength made me feel like it may be okay. A little while ago, my story had almost been leaked without me knowing, so here it is on my terms. Here is my story. Last year, at the beginning of summer, I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. I was freshly 18 and had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. I was drunk in a hotel room with other people around me when it happened. Okay, well, lots of red flags already, girl. Okay, so she's newly 18 out of high school drinking in a hotel room with people who definitely don't have her best interest in mind. She's currently 19, according to Discord, which makes sense. Last year, now it's the next year, 19. Okay. He was someone I had once watched, and he was eight years older than me Oof. and far more powerful. Call me a prude, but those age gap relationships, those age gap, I'm telling you, when I see men in their 30s talking about like, oh, I date a girl who's 18, huge red flag to me. To me, to Brittany, you don't have to share that opinion. Huge red flag to me. You know? I'm so proud of you and your bravery.
The full story is quite short. It was at a convention in a hotel room. It was my first convention I was invited to, so I stuck by one of my best friends the entire time. I was nervous but excited about it all and felt really grown up. One night, we were at a house party when we decided to leave. It was me, my best friend, and her other friend. This other friend was romantically talking to a really big creator at the time. He was also the best friend of my soon-to-be assaulter. She wanted to go back to his hotel room, but didn't want to go alone, so we went with her. I didn't really mind, as I was up for anything. When we got to the hotel room, it was the creator, the girl was talking to, and his best friend. The two of them and the three of us. Not much happened that first night, just some drinking and talking at a table. The guy- You know, not to derail, and I don't even know if it's really true, but I did see, for all their cringe, the Island Boys, and I do think so much cringe is happening there. The Island Boys had this clip on TikTok. I don't know if it's real, but a girl was sitting in the room with them. I'm pretty sure it was the Island Boys. And the girl goes, oh, I'm 18. And the guy goes, get out of my house. 18, get out of my house. Like, you're too young, first of all. She goes, but I'm legal. And he goes, 18 is too young. Get out of my house. And again, I don't know if this is real or a stunt or a skit, but I prefer that energy in people, which is like, get out. You're too young. And I know that in my, you know, early 20s, there were people... And you don't think much about it at the time. These these are life lessons you do have to learn. And I hate to say it that way, but even I was in situations when I was younger or with my younger friends or siblings or something. And you don't even think about the age gaps. You don't even think about how inappropriate things are. You don't even think about how weird it is until you're older and you're like, what the heck were we doing? Like, why were we doing that? And a big part of it is that you want to feel grown up. A huge thing that plays into this is like you want to feel grown up. And so it is kind of one of those like weird life lessons you have to learn. It's so um, it's uncomfortable. And this is what I mean. Like life itself will give you enough suffering to help you learn lessons. You know what I mean? So it is sort of interesting, you know. Anne says, I think she was 17 in that clip. But yeah, they kicked her out. Interesting. I thought I remember her saying she was 18, which is why it stood out to me. But hey, maybe she was 17. It doesn't matter. I appreciate that they kicked her out. Um. Either way. This friend had been passing flirts at me the entire night, but because he was the oldest in the room, we assumed he didn't know my age. Later that night when I left- Well, to be fair, he might not think about your age being different because you're sitting there and drinking at a, at a con, which maybe puts you older than 18, right? So to be fair, if she didn't clarify she was 18 and she didn't make that clear- if I saw people drinking at a hotel room at a conference, I would have automatically assumed they were 21 um, in some in some capacity. Right. So I don't know if she was doing that on purpose. I don't you know, when people are young, they try to be older than they are. I get it. So I don't know. Left. I received Instagram DMs from him. And in my Instagram bio in bold was my age 18, confirming he knew how old I was. A few days passed when I found myself in the sim same situation. Us three were at a party when it got boring and whether the girl wanted to leave and go to his room or he asked us who I cannot remember. Once again, I was drunker than the night before and was willing to go anywhere. I was naive and mm -hmm. so we went back. I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby. <laughs> on the I'm just saying you shouldn't be able to sign up for the military at 18. I think you should have to wait. I think 18 is too young. I do. I think if I I think eighteen is too young. What? They were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and it was an eerie feeling, like they could sense something was wrong. And I wonder what would have happened if I had picked up on it, and if I wasn't drunk and if I didn't wave it off. Mm. But I don't want to dwell on the what ifs. That night, I went up to his room. Back at the hotel room again were the two friends and us three girls. At the time, at the time, all of us girls were already really drunk from the party we were coming from, stumbling and everything. This is really difficult because they're in. So, like, I have to think about what bubble they're in and what would be the expectation of activity. Yeah, this is why it's so nice to have, like, a sober companion that, like, watches you. But, like, people don't. You're not taught that growing up. Trust me. So it is really difficult. Mm. Yeah, this is like a recipe for disaster already. 
everything. There was more alcohol in the room, and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games and, already drunk, I obviously completely complied. We sat on the couch and answered questions about each other, drinking a bunch, and the older guy sat right next to me while playing. I confused my nerves for excitement, as I had never been around such a big creator before. I remember getting drunker and drunker and really tired around this time. It was about 3 a.m. Mm. Right before the incident, I had answered a question about my age. We were playing a drinking game and talking about sex, and I admitted to everyone in the room that I was 18 and that I was a virgin at the time. I remember back now to him answering questions during the game about back when he was 19 and when he was in college, noticing how my future was his past, and I wondered how he felt sitting so close to me. It was a little after that when I had resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. I was scared and I felt sick, either from the alcohol or from his touch. It didn't matter because my mind was a blur. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. I eventually had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. <laughs> I was scared to leave or make a scene out of the embarrassment. Eventually, later in the night, I found myself alone with him and his friend. Everyone else either passed out or sick. I dread the scenarios that could have played out that night. The what ifs. I was just so naive. And lucky or not, the night came to an end with just that. The night lasted until 6 a.m. I was still drunk, either from alcohol or tiredness. I went to leave, and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators, where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken, and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get in the elevator to prove it was broken. And then after a few minutes, he ended the night with a, guess I'm going now, leaving with a wounded puppy look. <sighs> he proceeded to Instagram message me for a bit after that, simple flirting or asking about the con next convention I was going to, <laughs> saying stuff about seeing me there, simple messages ultimately filtered into nothing. At the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky that that had happened to me. I was excited to be around such big creators, to be at that convention in general. I figured that's just how things were that that was the price I had to pay to be there, that anyone would have loved to be in my position, and that I should have appreciated it. <laughs> it was a first. That night, it was the first time anyone had ever touched me. I, sh I, sh I assured myself that I was just being sensitive about it all, that it wasn't a big deal, but assuring only can go so far. I felt dirty in a way that I couldn't wash off. I couldn't help the way that my body reacted and flinched. 
part of me still wanted to feel cool about it all, to convince myself I was lucky so I didn't have to think about it. I would reimagine the scenario in my head, replaying it again and again, what I could have done, what I could have said instead, but it didn't matter. None of it did, because he never asked, and that fact would never change, no matter how- Okay, I'm not sh Just to clarify, well, I haven't talked because I just wanted her to tell her story. I We're not even close to her finishing her story, but I- is that- this is the main story? Oh, I, I mean, we'll watch the rest of her talk. I don't want to, you know what I mean? But, um... Okay, interesting. Hmm. Uh... So, so far, they were drinking, playing shot games, which is pretty common. And she was playing on her phone and he touched her, uh, disguising it as a tickle game or just tickled her, depending on how you want to view the story. So basically he tickled her and fondled her and they were drunk. And that that's it, right? I just want to clarify that that's what it is so far. How hard I thought about it. I changed after that. I believed life wasn't fair. I was naive and maybe sometimes to a fault, but I could only wish it lasted longer. I miss not knowing. I used to be kind. I'm angry a lot of the time now at that person, at myself, at the fact that a year later, I can feel my heartbeat stop at the sight of him and he probably couldn't even make out my face in a crowd. I can't stop thinking about who I was before at all, who I'll never be again, and how some things you can't undo no matter how hard you try. I never said anything out of pure embarrassment. I was embarrassed it happened, and I was afraid to look weak or to show that it hurt me, but I realize now that I don't think being hurt makes you weak. I think it's strong to feel things that have hurt you, and then to still choose to feel nonetheless. I was scared to speak out because I thought it was my fault and that I didn't deserve to. I was scared of him and all of those who surrounded him. I was scared of his power. I was scared I was mistaken. So you you guys, chat seems confused. Like, what? so what happened? I'm a little confused. Britt, are you going to go after, are you going to watch the guy's response after? Yeah, so we're going to watch the guy's response after. Uh... I think I'm a little confused uh, about what happened because basically she's saying they were doing shot game and he was getting physical with her, but like in a kidding way. She's saying it's inappropriate. She didn't want it. But also, okay. Uh, huh. Uh, let's see. Rain says I'm feeling bad that I'm feeling bad that because sexual inappropriateness is so common in my old bubbles, I'm not feeling the gravity of her story. Yeah, we're going to watch the whole responses. I'm I'm not. So the dilemma I'm having already. So I'm going to try to add nuance to this. Obviously, she's impacted. The dilemma is as she just described party culture, drinking culture and most of my 20s. Because that was mostly how flirting happened. So I'm trying to figure out, like, how is the culture change in which this wasn't happening like this? So I'm trying to figure out, like, what was the vibe? Because obviously when I was younger, my drink, this is what drinking, like, she just described, like, a normal drinking night. But also, why does, uh, I'm having a struggle here, I think. Um... Yeah, I'm having a tiny bit of a struggle understanding it uh, from the bubble's perspective. Like, what was the expectation of the behavior? How do they flirt in this bubble? How do you communicate consent in this bubble? I mean, she's already 18 and drinking underage, which means she's already breaking the law and she's already putting herself in that position. But then she's with strangers and I that's a bad recipe. Don't do that. But also, 
Like you don't think you're the person who's going to get targeted when you're young. You think like, oh, I'm going to have a good time. And most people do have a pretty good time. And so the fondling could be a part of that good time or not a part of that good time. And that's the dilemma. And so I think it depends on the cultural expectation. So I think consent is cultural. I don't think consent is objective. And so that's what I'm confused about. Um, but OK, we'll we'll keep listening because obviously this is why I do recommend sober companions to go with you so they can kind of help you because when you go into a drinking situation, you don't know what the expectation is. So she like there's a lot of layers here that could go wrong. So obviously she what she wasn't equipped to handle it. And that is going to lead to trauma if something happens, which means that I'm not surprised she's taking it so hard. Um, I'm not sure what he did explicitly. And I think that's what I'm confused about. I would I, I hate to say it, but I kind of would I kind of want a little bit more detail if that sounds OK. Like, I'm not sure if he touched her shoulder or touched her boob or touched her crotch. I'm not sure if he touched her back in a way that felt sexual. I'm not sure it, he didn't kiss her. It sounds like it sounds like he didn't pursue her. It sounds like they didn't have sex. They were naked together. So I'm just trying to figure out, like, where's the line? But obviously she has the right to feel violated and he has the right to feel like I don't that was like what I was used to doing. But also he himself being older shouldn't be drinking with 18 year olds, even though I know and I think a lot of older millennials know that was also pretty normal for us to be 18, 19, 20 and drinking with people that were way older than us. So also you have to pay attention to the bubble. So, OK, so we have to think about that. OK, we have to think about all of those things. You know what I mean? Uh, Discord says, how gross of a dude to do that after she said she was 18 year old virgin. I don't think we can excuse him. He's not a rapist, but he is a creep. Um, Discord says, I can't tell if she's not saying uh, it because of not wanting to get triggered. Like she's not going into detail. OK, OK, OK. I could definitely see that. Um, hmm. Hannah says, agreed, Brittany. I've had men do the same things to me in a drunken time and I never enjoyed the entitlement to my physical body but it was def just a part of the party culture and again I agree that we should change party culture expectations and my personal belief system you want to have a sober companion you want to have people that are going to protect you and look out for you you also want to be around people that are going to respect age differences and at the same time you want to respect the agency of the grown adult or quote unquote the 18 year old who is a legal adult to advocate for themselves and this is where the gray and the nuance comes in Obviously, we want adults to be able to advocate for themselves or even young people, but we also want to kind of not infantilize them, but meet them where they're at and say, hey, I don't think you're ready for this. And I wonder if, by the way, that would have been appropriate for any of us to go to her and say, hey, you're not ready to drink. You can drink. You know what I mean? And I think that's what's so like a dilemma is like the law says she can't drink. But, you know, is it that is it that shocking that an 18 year old is drinking alcohol? Got it don't think so right I I don't know anyone who thinks that's quite shocking but also what if she did have a friend who said like hey you can't drink at this party I don't think you should go and she's like I'm 18 I'm an adult it's like okay at what point do we respect her ability to be involved in the environment and what what point do we take away her agency and again I'm not even speaking about her because like we don't know this consciousness I just mean for us to have the discussion how do you guys handle it you know what I mean so we're still going to hear his story as well but I think that, um, yeah, I think it depends. Like, again, I personally, here's, I'm going to give you just a little anecdotal example. I personally have had a lot of amazing experiences experimenting with like alcohol, people who were older or younger than me, um, people who were figuring themselves out. I was a virgin until I was 22 and I experimented a lot with different kinds of people and how I, and we didn't have explicit consent in a lot of those situations because it wasn't the culture. And in all of those circumstances, I only consider one circumstance my grape or any kind of sexual assault. And that's because in every single context, I wanted to be there. I wanted it to happen. I, or I purposely flirted with people the only time I didn't want it to happen was one time, and that is the one time I consider my sexual assault. So for me, I don't, I didn't have a problem with the non-explicit consent in other other times because again, it wasn't taught to us. But okay, but I think the difference here is that she didn't want it to happen. So within her 
perception, it is assault, which is why asking for explicit consent is so important and should be taught to people. But of course, like it, so many things have to happen before someone even knows to ask for explicit consent. So I, I want to value her experience as something like traumatic to her. Uh, Maiden says sounded to me like he was fingering her. Do you guys think so? I don't know. Could, I'm sorry. Can we? I'm so sorry. I'm going to make you guys listen to it again um, because I don't, you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, you should always, ex always be explicit. I don't, I think again, that's a tool not everybody has and it's a tool not everybody wants. So as much as I think explicit consent is so important, it's not really what everyone is desiring in every bubble. So you have to decide like, okay, I remember there were like these people that I knew, these women that I knew. And one of them wanted to do stuff with me, like BDSM stuff. And I was like, oh, I'd love to, but you have to be sober. And she was like, I don't want to be sober for it. I want to be drunk. And I was like, you can't be drunk. Like we have to do it sober. And they're like, well, can we have sex drunk? I was like, we can have sex drunk once we're both sober and we consent to it. But this person was a little bit of an alcoholic. So I was like, you're never sober enough for me to engage with you. And it was one of those things where like she didn't get it, but she was a grown ass adult. You know, she had a good job. She has, a, you know, she had enough that people would have just like gone. I couldn't do it personally. So like I didn't engage with her, but I can see why people would have engaged with her because she's not the first person I've seen in that situation say the same shit to me. So Morgan says most people don't do explicit consent, just saying, yeah, it's not a part of mainstream culture at all. It, it's just not. And so again, even having the privilege of knowing explicit consent is sort of like a, a signal of what bubble you're in. Now, I want to rewind it. So hold on. We're at 1437 right now. I just want to rewind it just to see if you know, she says it in a different way. You know what I mean? So let's see. Seeing me there. <laughs> it was the first that night. It was the first time anyone had ever touched Sorry, the if you're wanted more. in the older guy decided to leave with me we walked wait i'm so confused hold on after that when i resorted to playing games on my okay. phone when it happened okay I so she was playing games on her phone out of nowhere i felt him slip his hand under my clothes okay out of nowhere i felt him slip his hand under my clothes which i'm not sure what that means sitting next to me on the couch in okay. front of everyone in front of everyone okay Ren Bay says, did he know she was a virgin? Yes, but I was also a virgin until I was 22. I don't think virginity matters. And I think paying attention to that construct is not important. I think instead paying attention to her inexperiences. Virginity does not mean inexperience, right? Virginity means specific kinds of inexperience. So I, I don't like um, the idea that virginity means something in particular, you can do a lot of things and still be a virgin. You can have a lot of sexual experience and still be a virgin. But in her case, she's trying to say, I'm a virgin to imply, you know what I mean? Wolf says it means he fingered her. I don't, I'm not, I cannot make that assumption. Right now, it sounds like he could have fondled her breasts or touched her over her underwear. I don't even know. It's because it was in a group with people. I'm, I, again, I want to be very careful because language matters to me. I'm not saying this in any way to take away her experience, right? I'm not, I don't mean this to take away anything from her experience, right? Because you can still be traumatized um, by your, like, you can still be traumatized whether, you know, whether someone intended to traumatize you or not, right? He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? Okay, he disguised it as, are you ticklish? So imagining he like slipped it under and was like, hee 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 hee. Okay. I coughed out a no, still staring at my face. Okay, so she said, no, I'm not ticklish. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. Let's, uh, Lexi says there's an extra layer of trauma when it happens in front of people. Even more shame gets added. Funny, I think I would feel safer in front of other people because then if no one's stopping it, it must mean like it's okay or it's not okay. But then if no one stopped it, that must be so much more traumatizing because it feels like everyone's in on it. But then what does that mean, right? What was the atmosphere? Morgan says it sounds like he was tickling around her waist or side or breast. That's kind of what I'm, that's what it sounds like. But let's see if she says something different. 
Chris says it was the waist he tickled confirmed by both parties during a two hour cuddle, by the way. Okay. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Let's see. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend. Okay, so even her best friend let it happen, which either means no one was reading it as an assault or consent violation, or they were all too drunk to know better, which means he's as much of a possible victim as she is. That's the question. If everyone is drunk, who's the victim? Are you mutually victimizing each other? So again, like that's, this is the problem with like social cues, expectation of behavior, what is allowed, what is appropriate. And again, you can be traumatized by things that everyone agrees is appropriate. Remember that. So I'm not taking away her trauma. Like her, if she feels traumatized, that's valid. I'm not going to argue her suffering, right? No one here is arguing her suffering. If she feels this way, she feels this way. Okay. And that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. Okay, his hand had inched closer to places I hadn't asked for it to be. I'm assuming between the legs or breasts. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. Okay, so he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game. So, of course, I can switch this in my head and I can imagine like something completely innocent. Right. I think we can all do that. Like something completely innocent flirting like, oh, my God, like I don't I've played sex games with my partners who play video games and like you like touch them and it distracts them like sure. But this wasn't her partner, though. It was somebody that she was sort of happy to be around. But then she's 18 and she is drunk. So that's not good. But then I personally don't think like drunkenness means no, not consent, because, again, drunk drivers, they're held accountable for their actions. Um, people who have sex when they're drunk, only one person seems to be victimized. I don't know if I believe that. I don't think the alcohol is what's important to me. What's important to me is the action that happened. You know what I mean? Maiden says, I think the onus is more on the 27 year old to know better than the than it is on the 18 year old. I agree with that, that the 27 year old should know better. Uh, I do agree with that, obviously, but I'm not a big fan of age gap things, though I do believe in the ability of an 18 year old to consent to sex and casual relationships with people that are older. But I also know like everyone can be taken advantage of. So, OK, obviously, I think we agree with that. The older person should know better, should know better. Right. We agree to that. I was scared and I felt sick either from the alcohol or from his touch. It didn't matter because my mind was a blur. OK. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. Okay. I eventually had to stand up after. Okay, so she did eventually get to leave. So that was the extent of the altercation. Let's go back to 14 minutes because that's where we were at. I know that it hurt me, but I realize now that I don't think being hurt makes you weak. I think it's strong. Mm-hmm to feel things that have hurt you and then to still choose to feel nonetheless. Mm -hmm. I was scared to speak out because I thought it was my fault and that I didn't deserve to. I was scared of him and all of those who surrounded him. I was scared of his power. I was scared I was mistaken or remembering wrong. <laughs> I hoped I was remembering wrong. <laughs> I was scared to go to any more conventions on the chance that I'd see him again. I never thought I'd be strong enough to talk about it or for what may follow. I'm haunted by him everywhere, in usernames, profile pictures, in my own past. I lost the passion I once had for content, for anything really. The association never went away. Okay. All the years I spent creating this community felt like a waste because of one night. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want to log on to this app all over something that I never asked for. I can't help but feel angrier all the time, seeing the love I had once had for creation before it happened. I tried to forget it all and ignore it until it reset. You know, okay, so uh, Netstar says we should, we can say they should know better, but we also have to agree that she and her friend should know better to get drunk and head to someone else's hotel room, right? We can say they both knew. I think this is where the gray comes in, like the nuance has to come in. So again, if we're going to hold 18-year-olds 18 respo 18 responsible for getting drunk and driving, 
are we holding 18 year olds responsible for getting drunk and going to hotel rooms? Now, the only thing that I think is very different is that we would hold the 18 year olds accountable for getting drunk and hurting someone or getting caught. We would hold anyone accountable for assaulting somebody else when drunk, whether someone put themselves in a position or not. Because the dilemma is like, she she can get drunk at 18 in a room and not hurt anyone but herself. But if somebody while she's drunk attacks her, they're still guilty whether they're drunk or sober. You can't be out here attacking people. But also I can understand a scenario in which there's like an assumed allowance. Everyone's of age. Everyone is allowed to sexually engage if they want. It's adding in the alcohol. But then even if they were all sober, you could argue the age difference is the issue. You could argue his fame is an issue. And that's the dilemma. What's actually the truth? And that's what's really, 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 really difficult to figure out is like what is actually happening. Is he a malicious, intentional abuser or is he um, an adolescent, you know, content creator who's in an adolescent situation having a little stupid moment, which, by the way, I hate to say it is mostly common in the world, which is why I would say and have stricter rules on how people can engage with other people, because the world is genuinely very messy. Right. Miss Fishy says, curious. Would we hold her as accountable if she was neurodivergent or had a developmental thing mentally? Where's the line? That's another question to bring up. Also, you know, again, how she processes this is, again, you can't violate someone's consent, whether you're sober or drunk. Okay. The question is, is she allowed to consent sober or drunk to being with somebody of a, this age difference? You know what I mean? And I think that's the question, right? And I think that's what's so difficult because you can be so explicit. You can be sober. You can feel like you got consent explicitly. You can ask somebody multiple times and then they'll say like, oh, I still feel like I was a little pressured into it. So it's really not perfect. Consent is not a perfect thing. And it's really, really difficult to know. But when you know, you know, which is why I'm picky as fuck. And even I am like, mm, like you want to trust people to know themselves but it's very surprising how people even into their 30s aren't, they don't know themselves enough to really know what they want at all times. So again, it's it's a very confusing, like there's a gray area here. Obviously she's so young and I want to take that into consideration. And that's why my empathy wants to go to her the most. Because right now we're seeing a very young and vulnerable person be in a very young and vulnerable situation. Okay. So let's just keep that in mind. Like 18 is really fucking young. And to be fair, that's probably why I'm much, you know, I have all these rules in place, like have a sober buddy, try your best to communicate, decide before you go into the party what you want to do, you know, all of these things, right? Okay, let's go. Surfished, uh, resurfaced as a fresh cut. I remember a moment around October where I made a comment about a certain group abusing power over minors in their DMs. Saying Ooh. they had minors in their DMs. Oh, minors in the DMs. Not good. It was an absent-minded comment, and I apologized for it, of course. It was a possible subconscious jab out of my own... Per okay, hold on. I gotta rewind that, because I think I lost the context. Resurfaced as a fresh cut. I remember a moment around October where I made a comment about a certain group abusing power over minors in their DMs, saying they had minors in their DMs. It was an absent-minded comment, and I apologized for it, of course. It was a possible subconscious jab out of my own personal resentment. My comments filled with people saying that I didn't care about grooming victims, and that I thought assault was a joke. And I remember sitting there, reading the comments, scrolling over and over again, heart beating faster. Over half of the comments had him as their profile picture. <laughs> I think I'm a little lost here. She made a joke in reference. She's being very vague on purpose, I think, probably for legal reasons. Okay. Um, uh, Lexi says to me, him knowing the age gap and still doing this is a red flag and makes it easier for me to believe his intentions weren't great. Might not be a greatest, but still sounds like a creep. I agree, but again... And I've look, I've had this conversation with so many people. Okay. I think age gap relationships are a red flag. 
I'm not saying you have the most malicious intent, but I'm saying something is wrong. If the person is under 30 and you are 10 years or so older, I think there's some room for questionability of why this is occurring. But I also know people who are in 20 age, you know, age gear gaps or 10 or 15 or whatever it is. And they don't want me to infantilize them or meet them where they're at. They don't want me to say like, hey, you're kind of like not even 25. Like, should you be in this relationship? You know, maybe they do, maybe they don't. It's difficult. Every scenario is different. And then of course, the people in the relationships, they feel like, hey, why are you like ruining this opportunity for me to connect with this person? I feel like I'm really connecting with them. And it's like, I see all these age gap relationships on TikTok, all these, again, only if the person's under 30. If you're over 30, like figure it out, girl, come on. But if you're under 30, my brain is like, mm, what are you doing? Okay. But the dilemma is usually the pushback I get back is like, well, they're adults and they want to do it. And I don't know, you know, so sometimes you have to learn these lessons the hard way. And then sometimes people have malicious intent. And then sometimes people are so traumatized. They're like infantilized or they're young. Like I look at Leonardo DiCaprio and you know, he's fucked up. He already has a lot of associations with predators in Hollywood. As a child, he has a tendency to date much younger women. I'm telling you, he's traumatized. But the thing is, is like your trauma doesn't allow you, like it doesn't give you an excuse to traumatize someone else. But then trauma bonding is a really unique experience that happens to people. And so that adds another layer into why these people gravitate towards each other as well, because it's an indication that they need somebody who understands their kind of trauma. You know what I mean? So again, like, you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I just wanted to die. Mm. <laughs> I was embarrassed of myself and I was angry. I also wonder how much like neurodivergency or isolation or trauma plays into people's life before they end up online, right? And I wondered if I could ever find peace. The idea of will I ever heal, it's scary. But I was tired of withholding my story to protect myself. I had spent so long convincing myself it was my fault or that I was just a coward. I just wanted to disappear, but I didn't because I realized that this is a problem bigger than me. It may sound dramatic, but it's how I felt for over a year. I feel everything very strongly, and I don't want that to change. It was a big deal to me, and I spent too much time downplaying my own experiences, and I still do. I'm still trying to realize that it's okay. Mm. My story is about power and age and consent. It pisses me off that they can hide behind their power while victims are left helpless, no matter what scenario. Is she making a claim that they're purposely targeting young girls? Because that would be interesting. Like that would be something to pay attention to. Definitely if these group, this group of guys or whoever it is, is specifically targeting younger girls to take advantage of them, that would be, that would be something, right? Um, but they would have to be doing that. You know what I mean? It pisses me off that he thought he had the right to do what he did. That he did it even in my silence. So again, the scenario she laid out could be completely innocent. It really can. Or he's explicitly targeting women of young ages, getting them drunk or encouraging them to drink, and then moving forward with like, with doing stuff. But now again, the way she described the, innocent, the, the situation is that he basically tickled her in an inappropriate manner, touching places that were inappropriate. She didn't go into much detail. So again, could be something that within reason two adults could consent to, or if he's targeting women, getting them drunk and picking them young so they don't fight back. I think that that definitely plays a role. So like it's, we're trying to figure out which scenario was it, right? And also huge red flag for guys dating 18 year olds, period. Like, if you're literally, if you're pff, girl, she just graduated high school, like leave these 18 year olds alone, bros. Leave them alone. Okay. <laughs> I 
My biggest fears about speaking out was you guys. I wanted to keep my community safe from what may follow, and also, most importantly, from the ugly truth of life. I promised with you guys to be open and honest all the time, I know, but I didn't want to break up what we had. I wanted to stay strong for you guys. I didn't want this to define me or my community or all we've worked for. I didn't. Oh, Stephanie says we don't even know if this guy knew she was coming over. She said she doesn't remember if they were invited or if her friend wanted to go. He could have already been drunk if they when they came over. If he's drunk before they got there, is he more is he that's what I'm saying like is the drunkenness can't matter. Like to some extent, but also the behavior that he did could be considered very typical in dating. Again, this is speaking as a millennial. This is very important because again, like you go into certain spaces and explicit consent is not normalized. So again, even thinking that it should be is a bubble. Like you're basically telling me you're in a sex positive bubble probably or a progressive bubble, which is great. So even though you and I agree, this isn't something that I grew up in in normie bubbles. Normal bubbles are very non consenty I believe that BDSM bubbles, queer bubbles, sex positive bubbles, they're very much more into explicit consent, but not even because when I would go to gay gay clubs, like with gay men, they would make out, grab my tits, grab my butt. They wouldn't ask for my explicit consent, like because it wasn't a part of the culture there. Now, I knew that going in because it was a part of the bubble, so I didn't mind it, but it, I also knew it versus like not knowing it like if you don't know it you might want to like somebody should warn you but also I think that's like fine again I think okay if religion can exist we can talk about like consent different bubbles that's kind of my belief right if you're allowed to believe in an invisible god we can talk about consent as a construct but people have to know what they're signing up for how do you get people to know what they're signing up for right how do we know like how do we know what we're signing up for because a lot of life is just hard lessons we're learning over and over and over again so that's that's something I want to bring into this. So not to take away her pain, her suffering, her trauma. Very valid. I recommend therapy. A really like very sensitive therapist, right? Like no way need to take away her. Ex you don't need to take away her experience to have a conversation about the experience. So her this if this is her personal relationship with the event, that is OK. That doesn't take away the, from the fact that two people can be in the same situation and have two different experiences of the same event. Right. So again, we're going to watch his response after this, because I think that would add more context. Right. But OK, I don't want to take away her experience. OK. Chris says, would you expect consent for a tickle on a waist during a two hour cuddle? Genuinely asking. It just depends. It depends on the situation. Uh, it depends if the, the tickle is considered an escalation. It depends on if you're taught that. And again, I haven't seen the two hour cuddle information. We're not done with the video yet. I haven't heard that part. So maybe that's in his video. I don't know. You know what I mean? We'll see. We'll see. I didn't want it to all be overshadowed by one event. But once again. Oh, and I do wonder if she's extra scared because she knows something about behind the scenes activity or some sort of issue with other people. Um, because otherwise, if this was just a one-off incident, she could just talk to him after and be like, hey, I didn't like the way you treated me and moving forward, like, I don't want you to touch me like that. And then if he broke his con her consent after that, that would be a huge pattern of behavior. But initially, he could do this behavior without it technically being a violation uh, in, a, in, a, in a malicious way. But we would have to know if this, like, maybe she knows about a pattern of abuse we don't. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know. This isn't about me. This isn't about drama. Okay. This is about everyone who's watching that is like me. This isn't about canceling. This is about real people's lives. I live this every night and every morning with every touch. I feel I relive that room. It's a See, something feels a little off here. Because either, and I, again, I want to say this again, I don't know this consciousness, but her, she needed to be more explicit with the story because the way she told the story makes me think the only way to be traumatized from this incident is if you are so incredibly sheltered, you didn't, you were never touched by a man at all, not by a brother, not by a friend, not by schoolmates, not by other women. Like, again, like, I mean that in the most like 
very bubbled way because I don't know what my bubble was different. But like as teenagers, you were experimenting, your friends tickled you, you had moments with them. So I'm trying to figure out like, is she saying, I'm try- I wish I knew the, not to be rude, but I kind of wish I knew the details to understand why it was so traumatizing because not that it's not valid that it is, but it feels like something is, um, diff- I don't know, something is like, oh, like it, she's very shocked and they didn't even kiss. They didn't have sex. Nobody got naked. Um, so I'm just like, I'm trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, what is, what is the thing? Like my brain isn't latching onto it quite but I'm not sure. You know what I mean? Um, Maiden says the only way. What do you mean the only way? What did I say? Tell me, tell me. Discord says it sounds to me like she didn't expect something remotely sexual to happen, wasn't prepared for it and wasn't prepared to say no. It impacted her to the point of freezing and no one else in the room was concerned. If that's accurate, I would want her to gain the tools to feel more empowered to set and reinforce boundaries and to build some safety within her friend structure. It's possible her friends suck. That's the other thing. Her friend was in the room and also didn't do anything about it. So like, did they witness it and nobody said anything? You know what I mean? Or do they literally not think it was bad? But assuming they don't, sounds like they don't didn't have any idea of how she felt in the moment. Yeah, I am curious about that, you know? Stephanie says if she was indeed uh, that sheltered, you'd think her best friend who witnessed that would have stood up for her. Well, I think, yeah, that's, I'm just a little lost, you know? Alex says this is there's something not entirely truth telling about the way she's controlling her tone while reading her statement. No, she seems very she's really crying. I think she's reading the note very well. I think she's got a lot of passion. I wouldn't be surprised if she kind of practiced. I'm not doubting her experience with the situation. So I just want to make sure that's clear. I, Brittany, am not doubting that she is having a real experience with this situation. The question is why? And what details are we missing to understand why it must have been so impactful, right? Because that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so again, let's just like figure it out. I don't want in any way, I don't want it to make it sound like I'm doubting her experience. Her suffering is valid. The question is, why did it happen? You know what I mean? Why is it happening? Because the event she described could cause that in the right kind of category of person. You know what I mean? Ripley says we aren't taking talking about the variable of culture that in culture it's normalized for powerful men to be flirting with younger pretty women. That's true. Okay, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's true. About connections. Okay. One of my best friends, Rue and I have bonded over similar experiences. And I'm sure there's many others like us. Okay, so people came together, they talked about it. And this is, hey, I'm all about empowering other women and other men and people in victim situations or people who are, you know, inadequate to like solo handle their own, you know what I mean? Like get a sober buddy, get someone who can help you out of the situation, get someone who will call the cops for sure. But also let's start with taking responsibility of not drinking with much older people in a hotel room. And again, this isn't to victim blame. This is to say ahead of time. So example, you're 18 years old. You've never done this. My recommendation is not to do it. Do not drink with people in situations where you do not have control of the situation or you know what's going to happen because people don't give a fuck about you and they're not going to care about your feelings. So I would take the more preemptive approach. I hope she uses this as an opportunity to tell other people not to drink underage, you know, under the age of 21 with people they don't know in hotel rooms where they don't have control because genuinely, and this isn't about victim blaming her. This is about saying, what do we do the next time? Well, the next time, don't trust strangers to have your best interest in mind because they're not going to. If you live in a good community with high trust, cool. But to be honest with you, like, I don't, I don't. I, from my own lived experience, like, mm-mm. I'm snobby as fuck now about who I'm drunk around. Mm-mm. I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by friends who support me. Without them, I wouldn't be half as strong and I wouldn't be here saying all this. You don't have to believe me or my story. I mean, I believe you. The story is very believable. So the story is believable. I don't think anyone here needs to doubt her story. It definitely probably happened. The question is, what does it mean that it happened? That's the question. Because I know the truth. And so does he. (laughs) He knows. And I have creators and friends that also know. And some who were there. 
This is about realizations. I was once a viewer, and now I'm a creator. I spent so long looking up to creators that I didn't know. Don't. They're just people, and they're all fucked up. Who I had never met, aspiring to be a part of a behind the scenes that I didn't understand yet. Sometimes I wish back to when I was unknowingly looking from the outside. I now have a ruined perception, or rather a truthful one. In this community, a lot of us are told to remain silent and to bite our tongues, and those who speak out against it are often isolated. True. And that's wrong. It's all wrong. But most, and most importantly, this is about my story and the stories of all the other people who have been silenced whether it's by their own fear, by power, by this idea that it's not significant enough. Because if it's affected you, it's significant enough. Okay, that's really interesting. Let's dissect that. If it affected you, it's significant. I agree to your internal consciousness, yes. Is it significant enough or explaining a pattern of behavior in which now you have to hold someone accountable for the experience you've had internally, right? For some people, like church is really traumatizing. And for other people, it isn't. I'm not exaggerating. Like genuinely, for some people, PTSD, church can cause PTSD, CPTSD. It can cause so many issues. Would you say like parents shouldn't take their kids to church? Some 18-year-olds party with people and it's fine. Some people party and it's really bad. Some people have it, the same exact situation happen and it was like what they were aiming for when people and then people have it and they weren't aiming for it. So obviously she wasn't aiming for it. That's the dilemma. She wasn't aiming for the sexual situation, which made it an unconsensual situation. The dilemma is because people don't practice explicit consent in this bubble. The explicit consent sounds like explicit. OK, to a bubble that doesn't have explicit consent, um, subtle consent looks like showing up, looks like drinking looks like answering questions about sex, looks like cuddling, looks like physical contact. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm just going to give you guys a tool. In explicit consent bubbles, you would sit down and talk about it. You would ask multiple times. You would have like maybe even a couple of days between the time of event happening. You would probably be sober. You would do a bunch of things ahead of time. And a lot of normalized bubbles, you drink to loosen yourself up. You drink to have fun. The point of taking shots and playing shot games is to get drunk enough to be physical. So again, when you're in a bubble that doesn't have explicit consent, you usually put yourself in a vulnerable situation in order to, quote, let down your walls. So it signals to the people that that's what's about to happen, right? So again, I want to acknowledge that her experience could be just as valid and we haven't heard from the guy. Maybe he says something and it totally makes it clear he's a pattern of like abuses occurring. He's purposely targeting women who are teen. He said, you know, da, 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 da. but in general, just OK, like we have to acknowledge like, okay, what bubble are we going into? What is the feeling we have in regards to it? How do we feel about this? Again, this is why as much as I sound like a prude, as much as my mother and father sounded like prudes growing up, there's something to be said about drinking culture that is sort of primarily reckless. Something about drinking culture is incredibly reckless. It doesn't primarily care about your safety, whether it's sexual safety or physical safety. How many men break bones, get brain damage, hurt themselves, get into car accidents because they had liquid courage? So again, I'm not the biggest fan of like drinking culture because I do think drinking culture can either be the greatest time of your life or some of the most destructive time of your life. So it's like, you know what I mean? It depends on what relationship you're having with it. So again, there's also that place in the middle. Like every time I go into a bubble, I personally do consent differently based off of who I'm talking to. So obviously, if I'm in a very progressive bubble, I'll ask if you shake hands before I shake your hand. I'll be like, oh, do you shake? And then I'll shake hands. If I'm in a more conservative bubble, I won't ask if you shake hands because I know that if I do that, they'll look at me like I'm a freak, right? If I'm in a certain bubble, I won't ask for explicit consent because they'll be like, what are you doing? You're killing the mood. If I'm in a different bubble, I'll ask for explicit consent or I'll land somewhere in the middle where I'm like, eh, eh, eh. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe I'll poke someone or bully someone or maybe we'll have fun. We'll have like banter back and forth. And then all of a sudden we're making out. It's like 
everything is dependent for me on what I'm observing, but that's because I've had a long road of figuring out, oh, certain bubbles are not going to protect you. You know, every time I talk about my assault, people think it happened in some like crazy subculture behind an alley in like a BDSM. It happened in a normal vanilla party, a normal drinking party where a bunch of normies were just drinking and partying. And it was just like a normal vanilla party. But nobody gives a fuck about consent in that bubble because it's not explicit. And then the people who show up to those party houses with open door policies and you don't know who's coming in or out, the higher probability of meeting a stranger or even somebody you know who's going to take advantage of you and use that as an opportunity to do it, that's where it lives, baby. So now that doesn't exempt BDSM dungeons or explicit consent bubbles from having consent violators, by the way. Even in explicit consent bubbles, there are going to be rapists. Even explicit consent bubbles will have predators. That, that is, that is the truth. So you think, oh my God, we have explicit consent. It's going to work out great. Everything's perfect. Predators just get smarter. They adapt. This is also about all the asexual people out there who are surrounded by a world where you're wanted for your body. I grew tired of not being able to speak out about my own story. And if it wasn't for Shelby... Never realized my if it wasn't for Shelby, I never would have realized silence was bringing me everything except peace. My silence is bringing me everything except peace. Now, here's a really tough question. When do we talk about Peter and people's patterns of behavior? Because I got stories about every YouTuber you love right now who's got a horrible, toxic pattern of behavior, but most of them are out with it. Most people know they just don't think about it. Like, I guarantee you, like I say all the time. Don't date these men. Don't hang out with these women. Don't involve yourself. And the world goes, you're such a prude, Brittany. I want to be liked by them. Okay, go. But then at that point, I don't know if you're a victim. Andrew Tate is in arrested right now by Romanian authorities being researched for sex trafficking. If a woman knows this and picks Andrew Tate even today, at what point are you not explicit? In the like, is that, is that not consent? But then some people are like, don't say that, Brittany. Like, she's still a victim. If, again, not the women who are tricked, women who know and just don't believe he's a sex trafficker, if they go to be with Andrew Tate, like, they can still be victims of his manipulation, but they're also victims of their own goddamn stupid brains. You know what I mean? So part of me is like, at what point are we held accountable for putting ourselves in bad situations? And at what point can we still hold other people accountable for taking advantage of us? Right? Like, this is very important. Now, she needs a really good therapist because she's obviously been impacted. And I think that's really valuable. And I understand her wanting to tell her story. You know what I mean? I do. And I believe in that. Again, I do. And as an older sister and a, and a mom in energy, I will tell you right now, don't drink with people you don't trust and know. Don't get drunk with people who don't have your best interest in mind. And um, have a way out. Tell someone where you are. Have someone come pick you up. You know, do the work before you get drunk. If possible, do the work before you get drunk or high. I experienced firsthand what the power of speaking out can do to a person. I hope this can be of some help to those of you who are like me too. Because we aren't defined by what has happened to us. True. I want to remind you all that it's also okay if you don't speak out. Because you don't owe anybody anything. It's your story. It's your story to tell and it's yours to heal from. And it's only yours. Sometimes the most healing treatment in the world is simply realizing that you're not alone in your own experiences. Um. To end. I wanted to share a diary entry I wrote around the time because I feel it was more fresh and this may help people who it's still fresh for them mm -hmm. or it also just may be clearer to how I yeah just to just to say it again out loud I definitely don't doubt any of this story I don't need to makes complete sense to me definitely think it happened and I think people who are targeting 18-year-olds should reevaluate themselves because uh, you're probably traumatized and you're probably being incredibly inappropriate and you're probably 
if not just traumatized, you're probably not even realizing, or maybe you do, that you're a predator in some aspect. Not literally, but in some aspect, you got to be kind of fucked at 27 to look at an 18-year-old and be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, it might just be un- like you haven't learned better behavior. I know it's really common for these age gaps to exist. I see guys every day on TikTok literally being like, I'm 36. I would date an 18-year-old. I think you're all fucking traumatized or fucked up. I think you're all fucked up. I'm going to be real with you. I do. I think everyone's fucked up. I just think it's fucked up. It's one thing to have a one-off. I can think of a sexual relationship like that could go well. Like I could imagine being 25 or 30 and thinking like, oh, I'm going to sleep with this guy who's like 50 to kind of like get this lived experience. But I couldn't, you know what I mean? I could also see that coming from a place of like trauma or, you know, wanting to learn about something about myself. But again, like where does that come from? I'm not saying it's wrong, right? I'm not going to black and white it here for you. I'm not going to say it's wrong for a 25-year-old to be with a 50-year-old. I'm just going to say there's something about it that screams like I'm underdeveloped and I'm looking for someone older to help me feel grown up when I know I'm not, which is why temporarily it makes sense to me, but permanently is like even weirder. Does that make sense? Like I have like a little bit of a red flag bias where I'm like, why are we doing this? You know, is it like a drug and you're just trying to see if you like it or are you going to like build a habit of doing this? And what does that mean for your life? I'm open to the nuance of it, obviously. I was feeling um, because I wrote it in my diary, obviously. This isn't really poetic. It's not poetic at all, actually. It's quite ugly. Around half a year ago, I was sexually assaulted by someone eight years older than me. A black and gray striped long sleeve, Nike shorts, a Calvin Klein sports bra. Okay, so she feels like it was assault. So I think that's really important. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I could see somebody else not counting it as assault, but it's interesting that she did. And I think that's like a valid perspective of her processing it that way. Um, Because, again, she didn't go in to be sexual. She didn't want it. She wasn't interested in him from her perspective. Uh, again, we'll hear his side to make sure we're not me- messing anything up. But so she is calling it full on assault. Like, that's what I was wearing. That outfit, it stained on me. They knew that I was freshly 18 and they all stained- She's reading a journal entry from the night. That's what she's doing right now. I, knew I was very drunk. I second guessed myself all the time remembering back. Was he drunk too when he slipped his hand under my shirt in front of everyone in the room? Was it this drunkness that whispered to me as an unwelcomed warmth that prickled along my neck? Or was it rather this fake intoxication that allowed it to stay there as I sat silently, unmoving? At the beginning, I began to sympathize with him. I technically never said no, I suppose. But I never said yes. Time froze. Maybe I thought I could turn invisible if I was still. Maybe. It didn't have to be real then. I had just met him. I should have been more grateful. No. Maybe I still had some hope in the world. Mm. Maybe I just haven't met the world yet. Hmm. You're lucky to be next to him. So many people would have traded me places. Ew. I wonder. Those parasocial relationships got to end, girl. Famous people are just people, and they're probably fucked up. How many have? I remembered his age. I wondered where I would be at 26. So 26 and 18. <sighs> I blamed myself for all the things I could have done. I really did. I convinced myself I was lucky. I let half a year pass, wondering why it's now that I still cry myself to sleep imagining it. Why it's now that no matter how many times I wash, I still feel dirty. Mm. Why is it that to him I'm a fake memory, but he haunts mine? It's not fair. I was kind in this world and it was not fair to me. I stay up cursing it. Power. He has so much more than me protection it's unfair it's unfair he can do that and it's unsafe for me to talk about it why in order to have a peace of mind do i have to threaten all i've worked for i've never been one to be bold so why do i have to feel guilty for staying silent i feel weak for what happened to me and even weaker for not you guys in the chat are losing the timeline guys it happened like a year ago and then six months into it happening she's writing this journal entry And now it's been another six months to this present day. I see you in chat wondering, like, when is the timeline? 
Okay. Yelling it out. From hiding from it. I don't want attention. I want to disappear. I wish I never had to be seen again. And as soon as I do speak out of it, I'm seen different. Speak out about it, I'm seen different. I'm seen as a person with a body that can be used and used in bad ways. In reality, I never wanted it. I'm painted a victim of a crime that I never chose. And what happens when it's all I'm, what happens when it's all I'm seen as? What do I do then? When half an echo on while half echo on about proof or disbelief, the other half will pity me, looking at me like I'm wounded prey. When do I get my dignity back? When I watched it be ripped from me when I was too young to recognize it. What Oh god. I'm <laughs> I don't want to be the brave one, but I will. What are consequences to someone who has This is so young, huh? Like there's something so young about this setup. It's really interesting. I don't blame her. She is really young, right? So it's interesting. Like she's so young. I wonder if her and her friends feel really overwhelmed, right? And they feel like they're really doing something really necessary. They probably are. Like I, these YouTube guys are fucked up, man. Story after story after story. So many of these YouTube people are so fucked up. So many of these guys like Colleen Ballinger, all these people, obviously there's like a lot of toxicity, right? And so it is really difficult. Um, yeah, Starville says she probably looked up to the guy and she was disappointed. Maybe that is why it hit her so hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man just says, I don't see this as a huge deal, but everyone's different, I guess. Well, it isn't like, obviously she, I think it is a big deal for her. And I think it, she has the right to have it be like a big deal because she went into a situation completely unprepared and very shocked. I think she probably romanticized it and thought it'd be like romantic and sweet. And he was aggressive and um, was like much like she probably imagined it would be like sweet and romantic or maybe not even, maybe not even romantic. And he went in just like drunk party thinking we're playing sex shoot, like taking shots games you know what I mean? But we're going to hear his side too because I don't know. But I do think like she's allowed to have this experience while still understanding that like he could have had a different one. But also I think it is a red flag that 26-year-olds are hanging out with 18-year-olds and drinking illegally with them and then touching them. Like even from his perspective, he's an idiot. What kind of a – like you're so dumb as an adult. Like you're so dumb as an adult. Even if you don't mean bad, you're so dumb to be over the age of 21 and doing anything with a drunk 18 year old. You're so dumb. You're so fucking stupid. And so in my opinion, like if you're that dumb, a part of me thinks you might be a predator because like so many of the predators I like I hear about are so dumb. Like I kind of wonder if that coincides with like, like predators honestly is intellect. I kind of, I kind of think so sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, how dumb are you? Like, you're a YouTuber with, like, you are a public person and you're taking a risk on your, just for your reputation alone, just for legality alone. You're so dumb that you're doing illegal things with illegal, what are you doing? Like, just, like, just to protect his reputation in general. You know what I mean? Feels so weird that he wouldn't be smart enough, like, not to get involved. You know, don't get involved. She can't even legally drink. Why are you getting drunk with her? And then you're touching her? Bro, you're willing to risk it all. Stupid. I was no conscious. I'll never find the peace. I can't get it out of my head. Will I learn to live with the pain I faced? Ah, Discourse says, I was going to say this is purity culture written all over. Do you think she came from purity culture and that's why it's even harder on her? She might be. What if she's like a Catholic or a Mormon or something? What if she like literally has never even kissed a guy? You know what I mean? I just want to accept peace on their own terms. Is one just defined by what's been done to them is this also if he provided the alcohol he absolutely broke a law right did he provide the alcohol to the people under 21 he's absolutely at fault so like that's the other thing right who provided the alcohol the forgiving world because i hope it's not 
I hope for every touch unasked for and every person belonging to that touch rots in this world unforgiven. I'm very angry and I don't want to be an angry person. I can't help but feel like it changed me and I had no control over it and I get angry again and I try to be kind and believe in a kind world but a lot of it feels cruel. Mantis says then she shouldn't be drinking and going to hotel rooms. Right. But that doesn't. Okay. So two things can be true at once. Yes, she shouldn't be drinking and going to hotel rooms and she can be assaulted. Like going, getting drunk and going to a hotel room does not make it okay for people to rape you. Yes. It doesn't make it okay for people to assault you. Yes. I just want to say that out loud. Like getting drunk and going to a hotel room does not then give permission to people to break your consent. So just want to say that out loud, right? Okay, so just want to make sure that's clear. And also, sometimes, depending on the bubble you're in, a uh, subtle consent looks like taking the alcohol, looks like doing the sex um, shots, looks like talking about your sex life, looks like doing things. So again, to bring in the nuance, she can have had an experience none of us predicted she would have because she maybe didn't know going into it that she's giving subtle consent. But also, it doesn't give you permission to like take advantage of somebody because they drank alcohol in your hotel room. So like, okay, so like all things could be possible at once. You know what I mean? All things. Mantis says, I agree. I just don't see what happened to be, t happened as clear as a consent violation. Well, it's a consent violation but it also could be a, a mistake consent violation. So it could be a consent violation that he didn't intend to be a consent violation. It could be both things. You can do, people can buy, violate my consent constantly when they touch my hair without my consent. I've had YouTubers do this. I've had old people do this. People are always touching me. I didn't consent to do it, but I'm not going to call the police on you either because I'm going to lecture you and then you're going to stop the pattern of behavior or I will get annoyed with you. So people break people's consent constantly. The question is, did it warrant sort of backlash for the violation of consent? Does she need to make a video about it? Does she need to talk about it? Is she seeing a pattern of power behavior? Is he doing this to other people? Is he often supplying alcohol to people under 21 to play flirty games with them? Because in that case, oh, my man should go down. My kindness never brought me strength. Not now. Not even anger can. I'm always losing. I don't find it fair how something can eat away at me this long. Why can I forget everything but that moment, no matter how hard I try? I get mad at myself for making a big deal about it, but it was. I guess I can't change how things affect me, and I wonder why. I wonder why every touch is a bad one. I wonder if the world's so kind, why can't I experience its kindness? I wonder if I'll experience anything soft like that. I'm embarrassed. I'm tired. That's it. Um, which it was a lot of what I already said. Hmm. But at least in that moment, it was more fresh. Um... I don't know what else to say. I don't know what I'm going to do after this. I didn't really think it through that much, but I knew it was important. Again, this isn't about drama or about any of that. It's about a real story. It's about everyone like me. Who was silenced? Who is still silenced? Um, I love you guys. I hope you guys stay safe. I hope nothing bad happens to you guys. <sighs> I might be gone for a little bit. But I don't want this to stop me. Because it's just something that happened to me. That's it. Um. And yeah.
Yeah, she's really going through it, my bros. I love you guys. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go. Um. <laughs> I really hope this can help someone. That's all I care about. I want you guys to know it's okay to hurt. Yeah, I definitely I recommend therapy, bro. Even if you've been hurt in your past, and no matter how many times you hurt, you still find room in your heart to love. And I hope you experience love. Because it's such like a young person thing to say. Deserve it. Nobody deserves anything. Okay, um, I'm gonna end now. I really want to thank my mods for helping me during the stream. I hope you guys stay well too. Okay, so she definitely needs some therapy, right? Like, you don't want to just handle this on the internet, which I think is like fine that you made that decision. Here's a link to the video if you guys want to check it out. It wasn't, I don't know who, who uploaded it, like, I don't know who this is. Okay, then we're going to watch his reaction. So he went and he went ahead and addressed it himself. Um, so we're going to watch that in a second. I'm going to take a two second break and then we'll continue. But I just want to say, like, I recommend therapy. I don't think you should handle this on the Internet alone. Um, it does sound like she was super traumatized by the situation. We need to dismantle that and figure out why that is. Like, why um, do you feel this way? What happened? But also there is a pattern of behavior from so many of these creators and I don't want us to ignore that pattern being very real and I think it's quite interesting how young she is I think that plays a huge role and remember again as your older sister slash mom let me just remind you not to give people under the age of 21 alcohol and then do sexual things with them just a reminder not okay okay if you're gonna do that you better be sure as fuck that everybody is consenting because that's two whammy issues there, okay? And again, as somebody who's given advice to lots of people in my life, they are still gonna do it and I know you're still gonna do it. You're still gonna fucking drink and drive. You're still gonna fucking do all your stupid shit because you're young, but don't do it. But of course, I know you're gonna do it. So saying don't do it is not gonna make you not do it. But I, you know, that's the problem. I know you're gonna do it anyway, girl. Because you don't believe, oh, Brittany's approved and Brittany's silly and Brittany doesn't, fine. But also, okay, oh, also, okay, don't just be thoughtful about your own safety. But you can't even do that. And that's the red flag. The red flag is like you don't even care about your own safety. Of course, you don't care about other people's. All right, I'll be right back.
I'm back. We're jumping into it. We're jumping into it. Okay, so now we're jumping onto a channel. Um, this channel is George Not Found. This is his channel. It's called George Not Found Streams. One million followers on just his streams. I assume he streams on Twitch, maybe? Yeah, it looks like he streams on Twitch. So I'm going to put his link in the chat so you guys can check out the video if you'd like. So this is his rebuttal to the allegations posted yesterday, March 11th. Let's see what he says about the situation. Hey, guys, I want to start off this stream by saying that this stream is completely demonetized. I've turned off ads. I've turned off donations. However, I cannot turn off subs, but uh, just don't sub. But... Regardless, any sub money that is generated during the stream, I will donate to charity. In the stream, I'm going to be talking about some very serious topics, including assault, abuse, and things of sexual nature. So if any of these are triggering topics for you. I've never seen him. I don't, I don't know these people. This isn't my side of the internet. I'm assuming because I'm in my 30s and these people look like they're very young. Uh, he's over the age. He's 27 currently. He lo I would have said he was 22. So, okay. Please be aware of that and be cautious. Recently, a streamer named Katie Bugs went live and told a story involving me about uh, sexual assault. So in this stream, I'm going to be addressing it. I was originally planning on doing this all live. Um, and that's why I originally tweeted saying that I would be live the day that it happened. But I... Yeah, what do you guys think? Kelvin says, good start, bro. What do you guys think about that start? I, pretty good start. It's demonetized. He's giving money to charity. Pretty good. But, you know, maybe if you're a predator, you could think, like, how would this look better? Is this the tickler? This is the tickler. So, okay. We're watching the tickler. Okay. Agent says, wasn't it the drinking age in the UK 18? Oh, wait. Did this happen in America or the UK? Oh, wait. Where did this... It was in the U.S. Okay, if it was in the U.S., then no, she can't be drinking at 18. But if it was in the U.K., then I take back what I said about the alcohol. Simply did not feel comfortable doing it live and needed to make sure that I had all the details in place and uh, just wanted to make sure it was all perfect as it happened. So today I sat down, talked straight into this camera, laid out all my thoughts and then essentially just edited out the blank spaces where I was sitting here thinking about what to say and then also added some screenshots for context. Ooh, Sierra says he gives me where's my hug vibes. I red flag. Where's my hug vibes? Red flag. People who are entitled to your physical form. Not that I'm, I'm not saying he has that vibe, but I'm saying he has a douchebag or like this is a douchebag vibe already, like the aesthetic. You know what I mean? But okay, douchebags aren't necessarily predators. They're just douchebags. Text. And I'm going to be playing that video now. Okay, uh, so gonna... he pre-recorded a video. He's going to show it to us. I'm going to be telling the whole story. So it might not seem like everything is completely relevant, but I do need to tell the whole story for it to make sense and to fully inform you guys. So please watch the video in its entirety before forming opinions, as this is very important. Okay. Finally, before I play the video, do not send hate to Katie. Okay. That is not the goal of this. Okay. And I do not want you guys doing that. Okay. That's a good, that's a good gesture not to send hate her way. Because uh, I, I could see someone being very upset and very on the offense uh, or defense. So someone be, yeah, okay. So that's kind of a good sign. So let's play the video. See you later, guys. Okay, so this is my side of the story of the two times that I ever interacted with Katie Bugs in real life. Okay, two times. So the first time that I met her, it was in Dream's hotel room at VidCon. To give context about Dream's hotel room- I thought it would, might be VidCon. Dream's hotel room? Why are these 18-year-olds being invited into bigger content? 
Dream, essentially. Isn't Dream old? And Dream had an issue with minors as well. Not that it was like super predatory necessarily. I don't know. The, I didn't cover the Dream stuff, so I don't know. But I think she was like 17 or something, right? It was a bigger room than average. It's not just a bed in a room like a typical hotel room is. Essentially, it's uh, there was a living room, there was a table, oh. and the bedroom was kind of separated from it. And okay. for this reason, we used his hotel room essentially as a place where all of our friends could hang out in. Bitcoin is a four-day-long event, so we actually used it quite frequently throughout, throughout these four days. And we had creators, friends in and out of this room throughout the whole event. Now, the first night that I actually met Katie, I was with Dream in his hotel room, and Dream was in a group chat with five other people. These five people included Katie Bugs, her best friend, and three other of her friends. Okay. Now, these five people, they were at an official VidCon after party and they wanted to dream they wanted Dream to go meet up with them and hang out with them. Okay. But Dream actually didn't want to hang out with them. And Smart. the reason is because at the time he was wearing his dream mask a lot. And he felt uncomfortable wearing it because it's just it's a whole mask on your face. So he just didn't want to go to the party particularly. He even suggested that they shouldn't come because he was he was assuming that they were they were having more fun where they were. They oh, assured him that wait, wait, we have receipts. What if Ghosty and Katie come back with me too? Maybe I don't know what my friends are up to. I'm still at Corn Dogs with some friends, friendos, but leaving shortly. Wanna play the game from last night? It might just be the four of us for a bit at least. We'll make it fun. I don't want to take them away from the party. Okay. Because he was he was assuming that they were they were having more fun where they were. They reassured him that that wasn't the case. They were bored and they wanted to. Are Ghost and Katie having fun? Not really. Would you be okay if we came over? They want him to come. So now these five people um, are trying to come to the hotel. But the problem with that is. To get into the hotel, you need to have a VidCon creator badge. Right. And only two of the people in the group chat actually had this badge. That was Katie and her best friend. So okay. So eventually what happened is Katie and two of her other friends came to Dream's hotel room. This was my first time actually meeting them in real life. I didn't even know who they were before meeting them. And then we essentially just were playing drinking games in the hotel room. We were just having fun, talking with each other. Nothing crazy in particular. Now, okay. one thing Casey said retrospectively, looking back at the scenario, is that I was flirting with her throughout the night and that she was uncomfortable with this because of our age difference. At the time, she was 18 and I was 26. She okay. actually assumed I didn't know her age because she had never said it. But then later, I had actually DM'd her on Instagram. And because of this, she says that it is confirmed that I know her age. To give some context to this scenario and to why I didn't know her age, my perspective of things is that I am with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where we are doing things that people that are over the age of 21 are doing, like drinking. And also the people that came, came from an event where they had very heavy security. This was an official VidCon after party. And with previous VidCon after parties, I even had problems getting into these events. There was one time where they didn't let me in because they couldn't confirm the legitimacy of my UK ID. They said they weren't trained to look at foreign IDs. So they didn't even let me in, despite me being 26 at the time. Hmm. And also, since Casey's stream, I've gone back and reviewed texts from the time. And there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband. <laughs> on one of their hat, one of the out. Well, I would need to see that picture zoomed out, but OK. One of their wrists. So from my perspective, it's a bunch of. 21 plus year olds hanging out. I have no reason to think otherwise other than her Instagram bio, but I just didn't see it. But anyway, nothing actually particularly happened at this first night that we were hanging out. Everything was very friendly. We went our separate ways and that's the end of the first night. And then the second time that we hung out was the next night after this. So we wake up the next day, we do VidCon stuff. After we're done, that's the final day of VidCon. So VidCon is now technically over, but we have one more night in the hotel before we need to leave the next morning. And actually at this point, I actually had a friend that I had only known online meet up with me for the first time. And the whole time I had known him, he lived in a different country. He was actually living in Japan. Okay. And I had told him I was going to VidCon. What you're trying to do this weekend moves on Saturday. I think you're probably good to come, but possibly if we go somewhere, you won't be able to get in and that would be an L. 
I have an extra bed in my room so you can stay if you want. Kind of flirty face, but it's like an emoji. It's like funny. I'm busy until like 5 p.m., but should be good after that. Fuck yeah, I'll be there sat. Okay. And he actually just happened to be in California at the same date. So the dates aligned and we made plans to meet up. Now he arrived early evening. I think it was around 5, 6 p.m. We were just hanging out in my room. Dream messaged me. I'm bored. Can you come to my room? Uh, I have a friend with me, Japanese guy from TeamSpeak. Who are you with now? Just my friend. Are you in your room? Yeah. Do you want to come to mine? 1607. Let's hang out, essentially. That's what we did. Me and my friend that I just met <laughs> physically. I mean, I knew him online. Went up to Dream's room and we were hanging out. Fishy says, wait, is she saying she lied about her age? No, she's, he's saying, I don't think he's saying she lied about her age to him, but she, he's saying that her and her friend were wearing a badge around their wrist that said 21 and over in order to get into events where they were 18. So they lied to the, the, the con to get past the barriers. That's what I'm hearing. And so instead of him thinking I should check their ages, he expected the conference. He, he just expected them to be old enough, which by, to be fair, they are 18. They are technically legal adults. So. And again, the same scenario happens from the night before they are trying to get him to go out to another party that they were at and but just a reminder even if she was wearing that bracelet by the time she alleges that they did their tickle moment she already said she was 18 and a virgin because they had done the drinking game so it doesn't really i don't think it changes much it just like they're normally 18 year olds trying to get into parties before they're of age like that sucks and that sucks for the people they're involving themselves with um but I can understand from his perspective why he would assume they're over the age of 21 at least, which would be much more appropriate with the age gap thing. But it, according to her story, by the time he tickled her, he did already know she was 18. So let's see if he has a different story. Same story. Dream didn't want to go, but was open. To Clay, I believe you didn't come. This is devastating. The ops are there. Are you still there? What's ops? Ops? What's that? L, come. Hmm. I'm coming here. And again, I don't know what any of this just meant. That is what happened. Three o'clock in the morning. But this time, their friends were actually all able to get in. I don't know how they did it. But Katie, her best friend, and three other of her friends ended up coming to the room, which had me, Dream, and my online friend that I just met. So okay. eight people total in this room at this point. This night was very similar to the one before. We were just hanging out, playing games, drinking, and just having a good time. So something I actually want to point out before I continue with the rest of the story is the way that she phrases some things in her story. Instead of saying that her and the rest of her friends actually wanted to come to the hotel to hang out with us, she said that one friend was invited by Dream, but she didn't want to go alone. So then they decided to go along with her because they were willing to go anywhere. I just think it's important to note. Oh, op slang for opposition. Oh. Okay. Could you borrow a pass or two? Yes, just got one. Try and get one for blank on a mission. Already that the story is slightly different. We'll keep you updated if they remove the barriers. Clay, I need to piss so bad. So whatever we are doing, we got to speed run it. That might be easier for us to get them in. Yeah, it'll be quick. From the reality of it. And I'll be mentioning this a few more times throughout. Me and me. Blank and Katie coming back to Hyatt, 3.31 a.m. The rest of the story. You can see in these screenshots from the text at the time that. 13 minute, our guy is speeding. You guys are going to the parking lot or where? We need to discreetly give Blank a pass. I don't know. Um, I'm having one of my guys come out and meet you. Give her the pass, then walk you in so no one notices her. Let's strat. Cool. Sounds splendid to me. Good shit. Okay. Oops. My bad. All right. Oh, my God. No. Brittany. Brittany, hold on guys i totally just fucked up i totally just fucked up my bad i hit a button i hit a button okay hold on wow we already got through so much of the video here we go my bad my bad it it does sound pretty normal all this stuff sounds pretty silly like they're breaking rules they shouldn't be doing it but obviously like everyone breaks some fucking rules so i'm not totally mad at this but i you know it's funny that the the vid the vidcon or the organization already tried to put down barriers for safety and then they broke those barriers which to be fair you know what i mean they were all in the group chat and part of the discussion to go to the it sounds like a really big group of immature people breaking a lot of rules which to be fair i understand i'm so glad i'm in my 30s i'm so glad i'm old and i'm not doing this anymore <laughs> 
I'm just so glad I don't have to do any of this anymore. So I also chose to mention my online friend. It doesn't really add to the story, but she never mentioned him or the eighth person that she brought with. So I'm just saying it because she actually didn't mention the sixth, seventh or eighth, eighth person. Because that's how it happened. And I want to make sure the story is straight. Another thing that she talks about is how we insisted that she drinks more and that we insisted on playing drinking games when this isn't the case. Again, they had already been drinking at this party before they arrived to the hotel room. And they had also been the ones that were asking to play the drinking games. So instead of us insisting that we play it, they were actually the ones that were asking us. And you can Interesting. Okay, so he's saying that they came pre-drunk and wanted to play drinking games with them. See that in the screenshots here. They had actually texted. Clay, what was that app you were using for most likely to game, for the most likely to game? It's my secret app that you can only access on my phone with me, you know? Wow, shut the fuck up. I'll find it. Okay, we're so, we're going to the hotel right now to steal your phone, you fuck. Okay, most likely to game app. Okay. I said multiple times, specifically wanting to play this drinking game. Want to play that game from last night? Game that we had played the night before. And at this point, I was pretty drunk, and so was basically everyone in this room. So everyone's drunk. It was the last night of VidCon. VidCon's a pretty stressful time. And honestly, a lot of people are happy when it's over. Not that they didn't like it, but uh, it's just a stressful event. There's a lot that you have to do. And when it's over, you just, you're just happy and you want to celebrate. So at this point, we then moved to the couch. There was a couch in the room. And I sit next to Katie. She also says, looking back on the scenario, that she confused her nerves for excitement when I sit next to her. But again, at this moment in time, everything was friendly. Nothing sexual had happened. I'm just literally sitting next to her on the couch. And during this, she was laughing, smiling. She gave no indication that she was uncomfortable with me sitting this close to her. She also mentions that she was thinking about my age and that I was a lot older than her. Again, she was 18 and I was 26 at the time. And again, to clarify, I actually didn't know how old she was, despite her claiming that I did just because it was in her bio. And it was clear to anyone there that she was not uncomfortable with me sitting next to her. And eventually two mm -hmm. of the people that came to the hotel room left. So then it was just down to me, Dream, my online friend, Katie, Katie's best friend, and a sixth mutual friend. Next, she says, this is a quote, resorted to playing games on her phone to avoid the awkward situation. Now, I just don't see how this is the case. She's implying that she is using her phone to essentially escape, you know, and such an awkward scenario that she's in. But that that's just not how it happened. And this is why. She brought up the phone game as kind of a point. The, the game was honestly the central point of the interaction at this part of the night. It was a very social thing. You know, she was showing, she was moving, the, passing the phone around. We were all playing the game and bantering about it, just having fun with the game. So I, I don't see how like she resorted to it and was like using it in that context. She wasn't being awkward at all. There was no sense of uncomfortability from her. She was laughing and playing with everyone. And yeah, I'm just, I'm not really sure why she phrased it like this. We actually continued to send each other high score updates even weeks after the event. To add further context to this moment, we were all actually sitting on the couch that was in the hotel. What, what are high school updates? Did he say high school updates? I'm sorry, I gotta rewind that. Why she phrased it like this. We actually continued to send each other high score updates. Even What's that? What's high school updates? Am I too, what, what's that? In weeks after the event. To add further context to this moment, we were all actually sitting on the couch that was in the hotel room playing this game on her phone. And during this, me and Katie were at the far end of the couch and we were cuddling together. We had been cuddling for, I'd say, around an hour at this point, playing the game. Talk okay, cuddling for an hour. Uh, just, I want to say this out loud. So cuddling is a very contextual decision. It could be, con it could be sexual or non-sexual. Uh, girls cuddle all the time. Boys cuddle all the time. Doesn't mean it's sexual. Um, so I think that's important. Oh, they were sharing high scores, not high schools. Okay, thank you. High score updates. Got it. Okay, thank you. So cuddling to me doesn't insinuate anything. It could be neutral. It could not be. It depends on the bubble they're in. So in some bubbles, cuddling is like an invitation. It's signaling, I want you to touch me. I want to do more with you. I want to do this with you. 
In some bubbles, cuddling is very neutral. It doesn't mean anything. It just means we're comfortable with each other and we want to be like next to each other. I mean, obviously cuddling, you cuddle with your children, you cuddle with your parents. Like cuddling could be we're sitting next to each other on the couch or cuddling could mean we're spooning each other naked. So I'm assuming they mean cuddling like in a normal way, like sitting next to each other on the couch, shoulder to shoulder, which is very different. You can do that with lots of people in your life and not have it be sexual. But if they're spooning, if she's pressing her butt into his crotch, if, you know, there's something, you know, all of that could mean different things. So again, I don't know what cuddling means in this context. I don't know what people mean. I would need to know like what kind of cuddling, what's the context, what's the vibe. They're already drinking. They're already playing like sex games on the phone or like talking about asking questions, right? She said that in her video that they asked about that. Well, let's, let's keep going. Let's see. Walking and just having fun. And for clarity, I had my hand around her waist above her clothes. So with Okay, her... I had my hand around her waist above her clothes. Okay, so we're going to, okay, so a little bit more intimate cuddling. Because, like, that's, to me, more intimate cuddling. Unless it's, like, very gay neutral. Statement where she's saying that she's resorting to playing games on her phone. I just don't really understand it. And I think that the picture that she's painting is really dark. When in reality, she seemed very happy with the situation was having a good time i also want to address a oh interesting menor 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 i'm gonna war i'm gonna call you war i think someone who hasn't had that much sexual experience might not view it sexually i would argue the opposite i would think somebody who hasn't had a lot of sexual experience would assume cuddling is sexual but you think it means that they wouldn't view it sexually? I think it's the opposite. Because if you're not sexually experienced and you've never touched someone, them just holding your hand like a North Korean drama, no, like a South Korean drama could feel like, oh my God, like, whoa, we're touching hands. So I would argue that she probably thought it was really like intimate because if, you know, she's painting her virginity as also something else. So, okay, there's two kinds of virgins in this scenario. The experienced virgin and the non-experienced virgin. If she's a non-experienced virgin, then I would say cuddling would feel very sexual or like intense. But if she's an experienced uh, virgin, then like cuddling wouldn't feel probably like anything. Fact that she claimed that would confirm that I know her age. She said that she had answered a question about her age during a drinking game. And we were talking about sex and that she admitted to everyone in the room that she was 18 and a virgin at the time. I just don't remember this happening. I'm... I mean, they were drunk. They they probably wouldn't remember it happening. That's the thing is like just a reminder that if her being drunk makes her vulnerable, then him being drunk has to make him vulnerable. I just don't. I think it's contextual personally in Brittany's opinion. I don't think like it's black and white. I don't think all people who drunk are as victimized by it. And then all people like I just don't. I just think to black and white it and just say like if you're drunk, you can't consent means he's drunk. He can't consent. I don't think you can take that away from him. Now, if you want to take it away from him and say, like, her being drunk is more vulnerable, I don't know that that's true. I don't know how this plays out. I don't know because that's, you know, what I mean. So all I know is too many people are drunk in a room together. So honestly, they're probably all going to victimize each other or it's all going to be a good time. But again, I think it's contextual. Some people have good and bad relationships to alcohol. Some people have different variations. Some people drink more than others. Some people are more lightweights, you know. Saying this to just pretend like it didn't happen. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I did not hear it happen. We're not just all sitting down and not moving. It's a, you know, it's a chaotic environment. I could have been getting a drink. I could have been talking to someone else. I just did not know that that was said. Another quote from her stream I want to address. She says, there was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games. They had already been drinking before they arrived. They were drunk. And the way this is phrased, it makes us out to look like we're kind of preying on them. And like forcing them to drink when they didn't want to when that's not the case and as i mentioned earlier they were even the ones asking to play the drinking games via the texts Mm. before they had even arrived so then this is when her most important claim happens i'm just going to read the quote she says out of nowhere i felt him slip his hand under my clothes sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone he disguised it with a simple are you ticklish i coughed out a no and still staring at my phone i was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked it to be. Again, as I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. 
The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality we'd been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. It was also around half an hour until I started moving my hand further up, and the way it's phrased just makes it seem like it happened pretty instantly and pretty quickly. There was nothing quick about it, it was very slow, and I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. Me and Katie were very touchy, very cuddly, and very slowly got more intimate. I've always been overly cautious with consent, and this is not just because I'm a creator. I've been like this since before I was a creator, and I think that's just the way I am and just the way it should be. Nothing came out of nowhere. Everything progressed very slowly throughout the night. And also, before I continue, I want to make it clear that the furthest anything ever got was under the shirt touching and cuddling. Now, obviously, people don't typically ask if everything is okay, even such as touching someone's waist under their shirt before they do it. But in this case, I was extremely slow and she was engaging with me the entire time, laughing, cuddling with me, and even playfully fighting me for the game that we were playing. Again, the quote that she said, he disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no. She's implying that I'm, it's with malicious intent and that she coughed out a no would also imply that I should be able to tell that she was uncomfortable with it. She says later, he made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the game I was playing. Now, I actually remember this quite vividly. I remember she was playing the game and there were parts where it would be very easy to lose if you were distracted. And she's right. I did do that. Okay. There were points where she was playing the game and she was at a point where it was easy for her to mess up. And I would, for example, tickle her or like squeeze her. And I, when I did this, she would laugh. She would turn around and smile at me or she would play fight with me because I had just made her lose the game. She also says how, quote, I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there. Interesting. Interesting. For a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. Now to reiterate, anytime that I did this, it was met with her either smiling, laughing, play fighting with me. And there was no reason for me to believe that she was uncomfortable with it. She was not not moving. She was not not speaking. Of course, I don't believe that silence is consent. I just want to make sure that it is abundantly clear. She was visibly and physically responding well to everything that we were doing. I Man, how do the autists in this audience feel right now? Talk about stressful understanding reading situations. Okay, so play fight or real fight. So obviously he's play fighting with her. They've been cuddling. They're both drunk. They're both using subtle consent instead of explicit consent. Um... Yeah, it sounds like a mistake of reading social cues from both of them. Like, I'm confused on her part why she was cuddling with someone she had no intention of going further with. Not further into sex, but just like in general. Like, did she, she's young, so she probably doesn't know. And I'm totally all about that learning curve. So I still think she can have the response she has. Like, I don't want to take that away from her. The question is, if she's allowed to have the response she has, then his side of the story could also also be true, right? So my brain is probably saying, look, I don't know these people. They could all be lying. They could all be scumbags. I don't know that, okay? But it's so far, we're not done with this video. So far, it sounds like they both are not, where they were both reading the situation pretty accurately and then pretty incorrectly. So it was like really accurate and then not... She's bad at reading social cues. Yeah, she seems neurodivergent to me a little bit. I'm not going to play with you. But I think all online content creators are probably to some extent a little weird. Um, Yippie says, not going to lie, at 18, I would have naively cuddled, cuddled with a cool guy, not expecting him to want to go further. Yeah, so it's interesting because depending on the bubble you grew up in, depending on how people talked about sex, depending on how you were taught about people, you know what I mean? It is interesting, like, what we would expect of people, you know? So, yeah. Oh, Emery says, I'm confused by the hand around the waist was okay, but the skin touching is what made her uncomfortable. Yeah, so I guess, like, again, I think it was probably something they could have talked about. But the dilemma is that they probably just don't have the tools to talk about it. So I'm going to say, like, again, she can have the experience she's having, and so can he, and they can both be right at the same time. I just don't think in all situations there's a clear understanding of what to do, and so you do your best. Um, 
But if he's guilty, so is the best friend. So is everyone in the room. Like, is she going to hold her best friend accountable for not protecting her? Or for not communicating like something? Is she going to hold everyone else accountable in the room? Again, it's difficult because when you're in a group of people, you culturally could assume it's okay activity and that doesn't make it okay. But then it makes me wonder, you know what I mean? So again, I, I think it's right for her to feel how she feels about it. But I don't know if it's the most logical moving forward. I don't know if she will feel that way in five years. But what matters is that she feels that way now. And so that's where a tra like a trauma focused therapist can come in and kind of untangle this web for her. And at the same time, he should learn to be more cautious in the future about who he's engaging with and if there's alcohol involved. The dilemma is that like this is this is drinking culture. Drinking culture is you're kind of playing a risky game. You know, like drinking culture is you're kind of playing a risky game and you can still be a victim and you can still be a lot of things. The question is, is he a predator? That's what I want to know. You know what I mean? Mantis says, I don't think it's okay to publicly do what she did. It made it sound like he's a predator and malicious. I think it's a little bit much, not invalidating her feelings, but well, I think that's the question is like, does she think he's a predator? Does she, she's saying, I think she's saying there's like some sort of pattern she's seeing. I don't know though. I don't know these people. And I want to make sure we're not jumping the gun and assuming he's innocent. And I don't want us to jump the gun and say he's guilty. Uh, he's already saying he did do some of those things. She did this, some of those things. The dilemma is in how the event was being processed. You know what I mean? So I think that that's what's interesting. Um, I wonder if she could have just talked to him. But the problem is, like, if she's already registered as something that's horrible that happened to her, she might not, she wouldn't think to go to him and be like, hey, don't do that next time. You know what I mean? Chrissy says, I feel like she sees him as a predator because she believes she was violated. She definitely needs therapy. Yeah, I think therapy would would really help, you know? Mm, yeah. Yeah, like there definitely needs to be some therapy, but it, it it's, yeah. I don't know. Do we believe that he didn't know her age at all? Like, do we believe that? I mean, she looks so young. I mean, she literally looks, but he looks really young too. He looks like he's 22. And she looks like she's 16. So I don't know, because if he's 27, 27 in this video, but he looks like he's 22, then I guess he could assume she just looks young. You know what I mean? I also want to comment on how she said that she had to stand up after many minutes for, for it to stop. She did get up multiple times throughout the night, for example, to go to the bathroom, to get a drink. Also, when her friends left, she got up to say goodbye to them. Maddox says, I wonder how much influence the friends she's connected with aided in her seeing it as a violation. Apparently, the friend has a video out as well. Maybe we can look for it. And she would come back to the same scenario. I also just want to point out that her best friend was here during this whole process. Then afterwards, did leave. And I think it is important to note that she made the choice to stay behind for many. Ah, uh, so her friend left and she didn't go with her. Ooh, that's not good. Many hours more. And as I mentioned before, she did get up say goodbye to them, and came back. We were even talking about staying up to wait until 11 a.m., which was the checkout time of the hotel. Raya says her friends also don't like him before this happened, so there's that too. Mm, interesting. Maiden says, I don't think he was malicious. I think it's bubbles clashing and both parties pad padding the truth in their pers pers perspective favors. Mm -hmm. Since it was the final day, we were like, oh, I don't know if we want to go to sleep for a few hours. Might as well just stay up. But that's not what ended up happening and it's at this time that katie says that this is a quote i went to leave and the older guy then decided to leave too this is phrased in a way that makes me look kind of creepy to be honest she's basically saying she left so i decided to leave too which is not the case what actually happened is dream had decided he was too tired and was going to bed so the night was over and we all left she then goes on to tell a story about the elevator and how I joked about it being broken to try to get her to go in with me. So Katie actually had her own hotel room on the same floor as Dream. So she actually didn't have to take the elevator. She walked me to the elevator when she didn't have to and said goodnight to me, which was nice of her. I did joke with her about coming in the elevator by pretending that it was broken. Okay. I would essentially, I went into the elevator, the doors closed, and I would press the doors open button to make it open again. I did this a few times and she didn't go along with it, which I respectfully took, obviously, and ended up just going down to my room. So yeah, she she didn't have to take the elevator, yet she chose to walk with me to the elevator 
to say goodnight to me, mm. which I think is interesting given how she's saying how she was so upset with her. But also I think these comments are her looking back on the night and not her actual feelings at the time. And that's essentially the end of the story. This is actually the last time I've seen her in person was mm. just as those elevator doors closed. We messaged for a bit after uh, through Instagram DMs and Snapchat. And our, the way that we talked to each other was always pretty ban banterous. For example, after the first night that we hung out, but before the second, she'd actually texted me and said, you better not be in Dream's room tonight or I'm going to shoot your leg. Oh, awkward. I'm in his room right now. You're not going to do shit. Obviously, she's not going to shoot my leg. It's just, we're just messing with each other. And I'd actually responded to her and said, well, guess what? I'm actually here right now. And yeah, after this, we texted for a bit, uh, sometimes daily. Sometimes we would take a few days break, even a few weeks at some point. And at some point after VidCon, we were actually both in London at the same time. And she and she let me know this through her DMs. Now, I will say she didn't come out. out book now. Shut the fuck up, business. I can literally book you. What? Yeah, I'm going to need 10 bucks for this convo. Please and thanks. I wouldn't even pay one cent for the stupid convo. You're bad at business. Yet you're still talking to my ass, dickhead. Ugh. Oh, cringe. Oh. Outright and say, I'm in London. But she did say that she had gone to a place that... You can't say dickhead. That's only for English people to say. I just drank at Spoons last night. I'd say I'm British enough. She got an alcohol problem, bro. Or shit, maybe you're British. What the fuck? She's drinking too much for a young person. But you know. Well, I drank at Simmons Bar last night. You probably won't even know that this is it. So you're less British than me. What are you doing in England? Rue said Simmons Bar was gay. So awkward. I'm living life the British way. Partying, clubbing. Oh, that's her. Okay, that's her saying I'm partying and clubbing. Using gay as an insult. Typical from stupid business like you. Ugh. That was All text messages are so cringe known to be a london thing and i commented on that and said and asked what she was doing Lon in london and just to clarify we did not meet up whilst in london nor make plans to do so she was always extremely friendly to me i was friendly to her and honestly i was very shocked to hear her say the things that she did say during her stream when i first opened up her stream it was it was after she'd already streamed it but not long after so people hadn't yet made the connection that it was relating to me and when watching it i was like I was actually interested. I was I was thinking, okay, what's this going to be about? And then when she started saying more and more details, I realized, wait, this is this is about me. I was I was very very confused, very shocked. Yeah, wait, are these text messages after he knows she's already 18 or 19? I can't imagine being 27 and having this banter with a teenager though. Literally, wait, 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 wait. Good point. Okay. So at this point is he bantering with a 19-year-old? Ugh. He probably doesn't see anything weird about that age gap. To be fair, guys, most people aren't going to see anything weird about that age gap, right? We're in a bubble. This is our bubble. So you and I live in a bubble where that age gap is super weird. But lots of people aren't going to think it's very weird. She's traveling on her own. She's drinking at clubs on her own. She's traveling countries on her own. She can join the military. She can own a gun. No one's going to think it's weird that she's flirting with somebody who's older. Right. Except people who come from similar bubbles. So just a reminder that we're in a bubble, too. And we're looking at them like, why don't you know this is a red flag? But like, you know. And didn't quite know what to think, given I had no impression of any wrongdoing throughout this whole relationship that I had with her. Not at all. Like it was, if anything, it was the opposite. I thought we had a pretty good relationship, mm. despite the fact that we actually hadn't talked in a while. I thought if I had seen her in in real life again also yeah i know so many rain says he's 27 but in the minecraft gamer boy bubble not to be judgy but that seems immature and he's probably surrounded by young immature people boys i know who are 28 are dating they're willing to date 18 19 20 year olds because they're all playing like games together like absolutely i think that's accurate if i'm gonna be real with you i think that's why gaming can keep you so young it's why anime and manga and everything that's why i say i'm immature in the way that i watch anime because it does keep me so young you know, gaming, doing things for fun, it keeps you young, which is why it's so fun. But also, it I think the same with like Hollywood stars, it stunts you in a way, like you get stunted. I think like there's something about that that could be healthy or toxic. And I think it's forgetting that you actually have aged. I think the toxic thing is forgetting you've aged no matter how much you're playing with Legos, like you're, you're an adult. 
right? So you've got to be aware of that. And so I think there's something about that that people don't pay attention to. I think streaming keeps you young. There's always this like, there's like this flavor to being online and having online drama and yelling at people on Twitter. Like guys, there's something really silly about that. You know what I mean? So adults can engage with it, but I think it does so show a sign of immaturity as well, right? <clears throat> Everything would be fine and we would be friends. It was actually around this point after the, after Bitcoin had finished and we were messaging that I found out her age. And since then, I never. I think that's crazy that he didn't want to confirm her age, though. I'm like, well, how old are you? I'm always like, how old are you? How old are you? I can't believe he waited this long to confirm her age. There's no way. I'm like, so like, how old are you? I just want to know how old. What am I dealing with here? Do anything going forward. And I essentially stopped messaging her. Her last message to me was August 1st, 2023. And I haven't replied to her since then. Your inquiry is pending. Okay, I scheduled an appointment for my next available slot. See you then. Finger. She flipped off the camera. Sarcasm. After I watched her stream, I was pretty confused. I didn't understand how her account of the story had been so different from what actually happened. A lot of the facts that she said just didn't happen at all or were phrased in ways that just make me look as bad as possible. Saying things like... um. I insisted on her playing drinking games or that she was frozen in place or that she was scared. Mm. She was having fun. She was enjoying herself. She was showing this with her body language, with the way that she smiled, the way that she laughed and just her overall general demeanor. Now, one thing that I think is very important to differentiate here is that I do believe that she regrets being affectionate with me. And that, mm. that really does make me feel terrible. I sure. never want to make anyone feel uncomfortable or regret their interactions with me, or anything along those lines, regardless of if it's sexual or not. And I am truly really sorry if I contributed towards mm. that. But what's important to differentiate is that she was uncomfortable with this after the fact and not during. She says, God says, Mantis, if she felt violated, she, would have kept, she wouldn't have kept going back to him to cuddle more. I don't think we can say that black and white. I actually don't. I think you can feel violated and still go back. Because like human psychology, we're, that's why like, it, like that's very common for abuse victims to stay in situations. It's very often for victims in general to stay in bad situations. So I don't want to say my personally, I wouldn't say out loud, like if she was a victim, she would have done this. I don't want to say anyone would do anything because people aren't a monolith. I would say she as a consciousness. These are the actions she decided to engage with. Why did she do it that way? And that's what's more interesting to me is not that because I don't want to assume anyone would do anything if we don't know that I'm not. But I would say, OK, this is what I think is interesting, you know, so I would say so far, it seems to me like a very young person went into a very complicated situation, did not know how to handle it. And she was surrounded by older people who didn't even know how to handle it themselves. Things got out of hand for everybody involved and turned into something nobody foresaw coming. I don't think anyone went in there with intentions of malicious intent. But I think afterwards, it ended up feeling different to the people that participated and it has become what it is so far. Quote, at the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky that it had happened to me. I was like, even after she was in London trying to meet up. Um, I think, I think that's possible. I think it's possible to tell yourself nothing bad happened, which she said she did. And to convince yourself, I'm still going to hang out with this person. Because if you don't process the trauma as a violation until afterwards, then you would try to normalize it. Maybe I could see that. I'm not saying she's doing it. I'm just saying I could see somebody who tried to normalize the interaction because I've met people who have done stuff like that where I'm like, stop hanging out with them. They're obviously hurting you. But people go, no, it's fine. Like, they'll treat me better next time. They'll treat me better next time. Why do people date openly serial cheaters? Why do people date toxic guys? I can fix him. I know he's hurting me, but I can fix him. Why do, why do men want to rescue women who are damaged? Right? So again, like for me, I can I can see why things go wrong with like immature, toxic, or people who don't have the tools to do better. So, okay, I'm not seeing a pattern of abuse with him. If there's other people, if there are minors in his DMs, if there's anything like that, we can have that conversation. I assume when she said that these YouTubers have minors in their DMs, she meant, she meant dream, right? So that's what I'm assuming she meant. And in that case, I'm pretty sure dream, I could be wrong because I didn't cover the dream story, but 
wasn't dream situation like a 17 and a 19 year old like i don't care about that right like i i think it's weird to be with anyone in high school if you're 19 but i also and i do think it's a red flag in terms of your ability to be mature and like you should go to therapy but i also know like that's pretty common in most bubbles so i'm 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 not going to say like it's totally like a sign of predatory behavior you know um, where did he go wrong? What did he do wrong? Well, I personally think he should have verified her age and then he should have taken it into consideration. But I would say that based on how he's talking, I don't think it would have mattered to him. And I think that's what I think is kind of like weird. But at the same time, like nothing happened. So, um, well, I mean, something happened, but it was cuddling and some touching basically. So obviously it's like, that's okay as well. Um, you know what I mean? So I, I think, mm, yeah. I was excited to be around such big creators to be at that convention in general. Now, actually, I have had a similar scenario to this where I was in a sexual, I had a sexual experience with someone where in the moment I was perfectly happy with it happening, but then afterwards I regretted it. And I'm not saying this to get any form of sympathy. I'm not looking for that. Okay, like, apparently the dream accusations have been thrown out because she lied about her age and said she was 18, but she's 17, and he didn't know, I guess. Uh, and he never had inappropriate contact with her. And I guess, so I guess they got thrown out, I suppose. Hmm. Huh. That is not the case at all. I'm simply saying this because I can see the similarities in the situation. Now, I'm not mad at the person that I was in this sexual experience with at all. I have no negative thoughts on them. I simply did not like how it ended up. Interesting. He's very calm. And I can't tell if he's being like, uh, if he's trying to like convince us or if he's actually very like, very level headed about the whole thing. Because he's considering her age. He's like trying to be compassionate. He's trying to say like, hey. This isn't how I remember it. Here's my evidence. You know what I mean? So yeah, in this case, like I think he's handling it pretty well. I would say I'm more interested in how her friends have impacted her perception of the situation or why she was so, did she have previous trauma? Did she have a problem? I would love to know like what made her have this kind of relationship with the situation. You know what I mean? And if I could go back and not do it, I wouldn't have. I mm. wanted to do it in the moment, but then changed my mind later, mm. which is completely valid. You're completely allowed to feel that way. Mm. But what isn't okay, and I think is just completely unfair, is to act as if I am the bad person in the scenario because you changed your mind later. I also want to separate this from abuse and certain scenarios that other people have dealt with recently or just in general. I think it is completely fine to come to terms with your abuse over time and realize that it was bad for you and a terrible situation to be in and to then look badly back on that person. That is completely valid, but this is different. Again, this all happened within a four hour period, three, four hour period, and I was not given any sign of discomfort, unhappiness or anything along those lines. Mm. And again, it was the opposite of that. She was happy. She was laughing. She was smiling. and. As far as I know, everyone else in the room would have thought the same at the time. So now what I'm thinking is why would she come out and say it like this? Why is she saying this? Now, I don't think she's purposefully being malicious or trying to hurt me or ruin my career or anything like that. But what I do think is that she is surrounded by a friend group that oh. completely despises me and my friend group. Oh. And... This is quite a specific scenario that probably doesn't really happen that much, especially publicly. So it, it's kind of we it's kind of hard to talk about it. But I think after VidCon, she, she obviously had told some of her friends about what happened. Whether or not that was in a negative connotation, I do not know. I wasn't part of these conversations, of course. But she clearly told them about this scenario. Now, when these people that are around you all completely despise me and my friends, they're obviously gonna look on this poorly to add context to this she actually mentions in her stream here I'll, i will just quote it she says i remember a friend seeing me in the lobby on the way and they were worried by the way i was acting and asked if i was okay i was really drunk and i and it was an eerie feeling like they could sense something was wrong 
Now, this mm. person is in Katie's friend group, and they were concerned that a group of five people were going up to Dream's room to join three additional people, which is an, an interesting concern to have. I actually have heard from another source that overheard this conversation and thought it was quite strange that she was worried about this. Huh. I think it seems very likely that after eight months of you being around friends that hate me and my friends and constantly talking badly about us. It could just be, yeah, it could just be like young and messy and like young people being, I feel like she, I'm less, I, I, I do feel like she is having some sort of authentic experience in her mind, but I, I am sort of like also probably concerned with the friend group. Her friend Shelby allegedly made a video. I'm going to look for it after we're done with his and see if we can get a vibe from her. Because right now, she and him kind of seem authentic to me. They both don't feel malicious to me. But she's really sm young and dumb. And he's really old and dumb. He's still young to me. He's still a kid to me. Obviously. This is a child to me, right? Like, this feels like a child. But he's not. He's 27. But he's a child to me. Same way I feel about Sneeko. They're all, like, big kids doing kid things. Like, there's just an immaturity to them that's so obvious. Let's see if her friend Shelby has a video I can watch. And we'll see if she's the sussy baka in the group. Publicly as well. And privately. I don't know what they say privately, but can't be any better than what they say publicly. Obviously, that is going to affect the way that you view the experience. And it's going to make you look at it differently. You're going to second guess it. You're going to be sure. thinking about it. And... Clearly, it changed the way that she thought about it. And I just think it's completely unfair to judge me and my actions based on how you feel about it now, eight months later, versus how you felt at the time. Because at the time, you were not uncomfortable with it. And I know I'm repeating myself a million times, but I have to. You were smiling, happy, laughing, playing along with it, everything. And that's all I really have to say on the matter. Still keep supporting victims. Okay, interesting. Okay, any money generated from this video will be donated to sexual abuse charity. Okay, I'd like to see the proof of that later. Thank you. Okay, let's do this. Shelby. Does anyone have this specific video? Who's Shelby? What does she look like? I'll tell you right now if she's the sussy baka involved in this. Who's, uh, who's, uh, no, this is a different YouTuber maybe. Who's Shelby? How do I get shovel Response to Wilbur, is that different? No, who's Shelby? How do I know who Shelby is? Hold on, you guys are saying I'm mixing people up, but she said I couldn't have done this without Shelby. So who's Shelby? Shelby is the streamer in the same realm. I think you're at, you're getting Shelby and Amesy mixed up. Amesy is Katie's friend who talked about George on stream. Then why did she say I couldn't have done this without Shelby? Who's Shelby? Always liked telling my different experiences that I've had um, in dating because it feels important to me to share what I've learned and maybe help other people to not make the same mistakes that I have before. I'm 30. I've dated a lot. I've gone on a lot of dates. I keep trying. Um, and it's unfortunate that a lot of my dating history, uh, there were a lot of bad people that tried. That means you're a bad person. Toxic people date other toxic people. Healthy people do not stay in relationships with toxic people. That's how you know if you're healthy or not. A healthy person recognizes like, oh shit, I think the person I'm dating is toxic. Bye. Or you need to get therapy. Okay. You cannot have toxic relationships and not also be toxic because healthy people don't stay. That's how you know you're getting out of toxicity is you leave. And yes, you can be a victim, but you can, you can be both guys. Okay to manipulate or control me um but that's not to say that every person that i've dated has treated me poorly um some people just weren't the right people um and speaking out about my bad experiences has never felt as important as it does right now because silence has always brought me peace and this time it feels like my silence is not keeping my peace. It's only keeping somebody else's peace. Um, and I never thought that I could be the kind of person to end up in a situation like I did. I never thought that could happen to me. And so for me, this is important because it could help anybody else see the signs sooner than I did, um, or hopefully avoid a similar situation entirely because the 
Whew. The truth is, it was dangerous. Um, there were a lot of things wrong in this relationship that um, I endured some pretty terrible treatment. Um, and I might touch on some things here and there about that, but um, if I feel like it's important to the overall context, but what I want to stay focused on is this. I think it's also, okay, because you guys are very passionate in the comments. I just want to make it clear, toxic people, being toxic doesn't mean you can't also be hurt or abused. Being toxic yourself and contributing to your toxic relationship doesn't also mean you can be, you can't be abused in a toxic relationship. It just means like when you take accountability, take it for your participation and picking the partners that you have or having a relationship with the people that you've chosen because you are at the end of the day picking these people as much as they're picking you. And so some part of you in your introspection journey should say, why do I keep picking? Why do I keep picking these people? Right? Like, why do I keep picking toxic people? Well, you're probably toxic, my bro. That doesn't change the fact that like what people did to you was not okay. So when like, Again, when you're, let's say you're two toxic people are dating, okay? When two toxic people are dating, toxic A hurts toxic B and toxic B hurts toxic A, okay? In the healing process, when one person says, I'm sorry that I hurt you and I don't ever want to do that again, the other person goes, thank you for the acknowledgement and vice versa. But if there's a situation in which you're both toxic, okay, and you've hurt each other, and someone says, you hurt me and I need you to know that, the other person shouldn't say, oh, well, you hurt me and so that's why I hurt you. They should say, you're right, I did do that and I should not do that again. But because you have not become a non-toxic person, what you'll end up doing is like, well, you hurt me so I could hurt you. Which is why I always say how you treat your enemies tells me more about you. Again, do you think you're allowed to hurt people because they've hurt you? If you believe that, that is within your value structure, but I don't think it's personally healthy. I think healthy people know they don't get to hurt people just because they hurt them. And toxic people think an eye for an eye, in my opinion. I think you should rise above, not lower yourself down. But usually people that are toxic will be good to you until you're not good to them, and then they'll be even worse to you because now they feel justified in hurting you. And I would say this is a toxic response, probably brought on by a defense mechanism. Maybe. I'm not a therapist, right? I'm a philosophy YouTuber. So I'm thinking that you're thinking the justification for hurting other people is they hurt you first. And so you're going to get the last word. This is probably a trauma response from some sort of defense mechanism you created while you were being like raised by crazy people or something. Because it just makes no sense. Healthy people usually have better responses. Actually, George's response to Katie was much more healthy then Katie's response to George. So that tells me Katie's in the trauma, which is reasonable and valid to be in trauma. So she should get therapy. But also tells me George probably isn't. George didn't seem very toxic or traumatized, which means he probably is more likely to have the healthiest relationship with the situation because of the way he reacted, which was not to demonize her, not to bully her, not to, not to send, you know, hate her way. It was to recognize where she's coming from, if anything, to blame the people around her, but to give her a way out because she's young and naive and working on it. So I think there's like a lot of goodness I see from George that I'm not seeing from other people. Now, being toxic or being abused or being in trauma doesn't mean you're a bad person, but it does mean that you might be having different relationships with perception than the people around you. And that's going to cause a lot of confusion from everyone's perspective. And then on top of that, what if you're just like in a group full of really healthy people, but some are neurodivergent and some neurotypical, you're going to have conflict. What if you're just in a room with very healthy people and you're both neurotypical, but you speak completely different languages, like not in terms of like English and Spanish, but in terms of how you use language, your body language, how you communicate. These things are cultural. So look, communication, miscommunication is always going to happen even with good people. My siblings and I miscommunicate all the time. That's why we love each other. We clarify. We're patient. We don't assume we're being malicious or we have bad intent. We're just like, hey, I think we're miscommunicating right now because like I'm not understanding where you're coming from. And then we clarify because we love each other. If you're miscommunicating, which is very normal, okay, you have to decide if you're going to work through it or if you're just like, you're just going to say, oh, we're not really understanding each other right now. We'll figure it out, though. We're not understanding each other right now, but we'll figure it out. Or 
Are you actually refusing to try to understand someone or are you actually like a predator with a pattern of abuse and you're really good at hiding it and we're all falling for your shtick? Specific issue um, and the things that happened matter factly and the things that people saw and witnessed in our circle. Um, it took me 10 months after to heal and I spoke with multiple therapists and tried different forms of therapy. Um, I tried somatic therapy. That one was actually really good for me. <laughs> um, because that one actually helped me release a lot of um, built up anger I was having over the last year. Um, but the anger that I was feeling was for myself because um, I felt like I should have known better. I felt so stupid at myself mm -hmm. for um, sort of just staying through. Now I'm seeing through this video for the first time. I saw clips of this on TikTok, but I'm gonna try to like, I'm not assuming anything about this girl. Okay, I know we just came off another story and it seems like we're going to go into this story and view this girl as an obvious liar, but I don't want to do that because I don't, I don't know, like, I don't think Katie's lying, right? Her and George told the same story, just had different perceptions of how it went, much like Cole and Zeneb, right? My infamous Cole and Zeneb example in Love is Blind, same conversation, different perception, okay? And then this girl, Shelby Shubble, um... I want to kind of understand her perspective and see how I feel about her. I know you guys wanted me to cover this when it was happening. So here I am better late than never. But again, there does seem a pattern. Okay. And I, I'm going to say this out loud. Please, like, you don't have to listen to me. But just pay attention. Okay. If you want. YouTubers are people. Streamers are people. They are complicated, often neurodivergent, often traumatized, often toxic, often very confused people who end up online because they need communities because they can't fucking deal with real life. And they come to the internet because it's more diverse with more interesting people that could understand them. Then they reach some level of fame and it gets to their head and they don't know what to do with it because they've never had a normal life, which is why they ended up on the internet. Okay. That's some category of streamer, some category of YouTuber, often like these people. Then... There are content creators that make a concerted effort to stay away from the drama, to not make friend groups. Even myself, how many friend groups on YouTube have I have to, have I had to learn? Like, fuck, they're always so toxic. And this is why this year round, I swear to God, I'm making it clear I don't want to be a part of your cliques. I'd rather do my own thing and collab responsibly, okay? Because genuinely, once you start a friend group, which sounds nice, oh, how romantic, how fun, how free, we have a friend group, it's so cool, we're hanging out, it's high school with money and clout in an audience. I don't want your trauma involved in my audience. I've been very particular about even companies I've worked with or things I've done because I don't want them influencing my audience in like a toxic way that I think doesn't align with my values. And I think a lot of business on YouTube does sound or does end up being that way. Oh my God, I have a hair that is clinging to my face right now. And so again, pay attention to how YouTube circles work. Some of them can be great and most of them have a really good boundary with each other and they know they're just working. It's when those lines get crossed, it gets messy. I'm not saying it can't be possible. Of course it can be. I have lots of YouTube friends that I would feel more than comfortable inviting them to my home. I have lots of people in my audience that have become content creators. I'd be comfortable inviting them into my home. We're all adults. Okay, my sphere is adults. My sphere is old. So we're all grownups, okay? That doesn't mean shit doesn't go down. Just like in an office, just like in a church, just like in a doctor's office. You ever worked at a doctor's office? drama you ever worked at a vet drama because when people get together drama follows Ooh, which kind of coincides with my queer eye story i want to cover tomorrow even the queer eye guys drama drama when groups of people get together drama as much as it's like very cool to think about having a friend group drama because values clash ideas clash languages anyways so let's see if shelby is is justified in her feelings about Wilbur, who she accused of abuse, which by the way, I do think you can be a good person who abuses people, but not a healthy person. I think healthy people could accidentally make a mistake, but I don't think they intentionally abuse. And I think they could accidentally, maybe, but I don't think so. I could be wrong. 
I think healthy people tend not to abuse people while toxic people do, but you can be a good person and be toxic. I think good people abuse people all the time. I just got off the phone with your mom and she's hella abusive. You know, I still wouldn't call the cops on her because like abuse is a very specific relationship we're having with our own trauma, our own cultural background, what we think is correct, what we think is good, what is abusive to one kid might not be to another. Through all of this, um, and I shared my story with a lot of friends after I started talking to therapists and I was like, so this thing happened and I, I wasn't really sure. It just seems weird now to me looking back and all of them told me exactly what was happening in the words that I was too afraid to use. Um, hmm. And I was being hurt in my last relationship. Did she just say that my friends gave me the words I needed to use? No offense. Your friends are dumb. That's another thing I just want to say out loud. Your friends are stupid. They don't know anything. And they need to, you need to make sure you're talking to the right people to contextualize reality. Sometimes your friends are smart. Often your friends are stupid. You know? So just keep that in mind. And it took me all of that time to see it through that lens. Oh, um, see? I so she recontextualized her reality because her friends. So that's either a good thing or a bad thing. Do you have healthy friends that can contextualize it within reason? Or do you have friends who read a bunch of like random posts on the internet and think they know what they're talking about? Vin posted an anonymous story to... Yes, Ripley. They only know what they know. We all only know what we know. Reddit that I have now deleted with an anonymous account. But in posting that, I found a dozen other stories that were exactly like mine. Exactly. The Discord says, I think she said her therapist. I thought she said her friends. Hold on. Let's go back in my last relationship to all of them and I, I wasn't friends after friends. I started talking to therapists and I was like I talked to my friends after I started talking to therapists about my story and my friends helped me contextualize so this thing happened and I, I wasn't really sure it just seems weird now to me looking back and all of them told me exactly what was happening in the words it's that I was too afraid to use um And I was being hurt in my last relationship. And it took me all of that time to see it through that lens. Um, I even posted an anonymous story to Reddit that I have now deleted with an anonymous account. Mm. But in posting that, I found a dozen other stories that were exactly like mine, exactly the same way. Um, and all of the comments said exactly the same thing. Okay, wait, Biza says, do people's friends really be out here trying to convince them they have trauma? Yes, and it's within reason. Like, look, even if you came to me and I said, hey, that sounds like trauma, you should ask a therapist. That's usually what I say. Like, you should ask a therapist. So I tried to say, like, in my opinion, I think it's trauma and abuse, but you should ask a therapist. Like, do you get what I'm saying? You should ask a therapist, you know, because you're supposed to, like, hey, I think you have sprained your ankle, but you should ask a doctor. And look, therapists and doctors, can also do wrong, like get wrong diagnoses. So remember, humans are going to human. They're going to be flawed. That's why it's so hard to be introspective. And we usually settle on the first answer, right? So I understand I'm asking like, I'm asking, I'm just pointing out the possible flaws. Um, and I was so mad at myself because I was lying too um, at a certain point to protect this person because I knew that if I told my friends the truth, make him look really bad um I didn't think that I would cry and I practiced saying all of this and I didn't cry but it's easier to practice it when no one is listening um but he always cared more about how it looked and that was really important not what was true um pretty common for narcissistic like uh streamers and I also think for traumatized people I see that on a lot of people people do that out of narcissism and they do it out of hurt People, lots of people, even victims of abuse, want things to look better than they are because they're too embarrassed at the truth. And I think that that's really a, a toxic part of your unhealthy brain, whether you're doing it because you want people to think you're cool or if you're doing it because you don't want people to think that you're in a bad situation. And it was really subtle. When I hear about... And again, me saying you're toxic 
doesn't mean you're a bad person. Me saying you've been abusive doesn't even mean you're a bad person. I think most of the human population as a species is like having a very toxic and abusive relationship with itself. Like it abuses its own consciousness. You think it's not going to abuse yours. And I think it takes a lot of introspection to say out loud that I am contributing to the toxicity of the world by not acknowledging in ways that I am, but also understanding that it's always going to be complicated and it's, it's going to, require a lot of good people maybe not hanging out or speaking to each other because when they're together they create toxicity good people can be toxic to one another that's why i say like you're not healthy right now it doesn't make you not good just because you're unhealthy doesn't mean you're not good um when i hear about physical abuse i think of hitting i think of hitting sure. and punching um, so I thought that this wasn't violent enough. Um, huh. That's interesting. To be abused. What do you guys think about when you hear physical abuse? I think about hitting, uh, punching, shoving. I think about, uh, um, uh, I guess anything physical that's unconsensual maybe. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> uh, I thought that it was just like a constant accident that he kept hurting me. Um, but he's not hitting me and it didn't start as something that he did to hurt me. Um, uh, he had this habit of biting, which sure. is so weird to me. Very now. common. Very common. Very common. Biting. Very common. Very common. I'm not even going to play with you. I don't even know if I've dated anybody that didn't bite. I don't even know if that's a thing or that I didn't bite myself. Like, I don't even know if that's a thing. Like I never been with a non-biter. Or vice versa, I guess. Like, But he said that he had had this habit since he was a kid. And even his mom said that that was true. And he said... Neurodivergent as fuck, bro. That it was just affectionate. And that that might have been... I mean, I think that that might have been true maybe at the start. But I also feel that I have good reason to believe that every part of it was a lie. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, and I had no problem with just biting that isn't even the most uncommon thing um but he did mention something or kelvin says can't you get sepsis from a bite damn how hard are you biting and also gross how dirty your mouth bro early that i should have taken as a red flag um and he wanted to make sure that i was okay with him biting me because he didn't want me to come back later and say that he abused me sure which I thought was really weird. Yeah, it's weird that he doesn't want to be seen as an abuser versus like he's just caring about her. Her? Considering he had never hurt me before. Hmm. And so why would I call it abuse? Well, lots of people think BDSM or kink is abusive inherently. So if this is a BDSM or kink thing, if it's a biting thing that leaves bruises, some people think bruises are inherently abusive. So I'm assuming that that's maybe where the concern is from. And why was he thinking about that? And I thought he was being sweet, checking on me to make sure that I was still comfortable. Um, but I, of course I was because he hadn't hurt me. And why would I think he ever would? Um, Interesting. And then he did for the first time by accident. Uh, and I don't specifically remember the actual first time that he bit me too hard by accident because I didn't think that it would be significant. Um, I thought that it would only happen once and <clears throat> he started biting me more and more over a period of time sort of throughout the whole relationship and consensually or non-consensually i'm confused does she consent to it or no does she want the bites or no because if she didn't want to be bitten then they're incompatible right accidents of him biting too hard and really hurting me happened more and more frequently that could be really common though because like sensitive parts of the skin blah 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 um i mean you can hug someone too hard on accident constantly it just depends on the relationship but does she like the biting because if she doesn't like the biting then that's kind of weird like why would you consent to it you know what i mean um but he always seemed genuinely sorry and he okay. decided that he didn't want to keep accidentally hurting me um so we were going to use a safe word Okay. Um, so he could learn where my limit was, where my pain tolerance. Okay, so she was fine with the biting, you guys are saying. Okay. So she's consented to the biting, but it's the level of biting. Okay, fair. Tolerance ended. Uh, and saying that out loud now doesn't sound 
Like, that's not very sound logic. Um, what? What are you talking about? That totally makes sense. What? Where my pain tolerance ended. Uh, and saying that out loud. No, now, that's literally how BD, that's how you practice like boundaries is you go up to the line and you just cross it a little bit so you know where your line is. No, wait, that's totally normal. Just like you're a child and you're trying to figure out where your like threshold is like or you're like a, working out and you're trying to figure out where your threshold is. You go up to the boundary, you cross it a little bit. And you go, OK, that's the boundary for sure, bro. Now doesn't sound like that's not very sound logic. Um, but yeah, Lakar says Normie's trying out kink. Yeah, what the fuck? But at the time, I thought he cared about not hurting me. But in reality, it's like, why are you biting so hard? And why do you have to bite so hard? And it shouldn't be that hard of a problem to stop. Um, that shouldn't be. Yeah, like, obviously, if he has no self-control, you know. Tuesday says you aren't supposed to be using a safe word all the time. Total disagree. I use my safe word all the time, even in conversations. I agree. Disagree. You should use your safe word all the time. Safe words are not punishments. They're just communication tools. I disagree. I'm a big safe word proponent. I think everyone should use them. And I think you should use them for all moments of the day. Yellow, I want to hear you tell the story about your video game, but I'm actually not paying attention to anything because my brain fog is really bad today. Could you tell me in five minutes? Yes, I could. Thank you for letting me know. Red, I would love to have this conversation, but I'm literally out of spoons. Cannot have it right now. I disagree. I think safe words should be used in conversation when doing the dishes, walking the dog. Like, I just think safe words are communication tools. They're constructs. Um, and I think you should use them. Mikey, membership for one month says I'm late. Give me the rundown or you're straight. Basically, we're watching couples have drama in terms of what they think is abuse and toxic. And everyone is basically summarizing that it's bubbles clashing. Let's see. Okay. Chris says, I thought the point of the of having a safe word was testing boundaries. No, the point of the safe word is to communicate using a word that's different enough that it signals to your brain to stop and see what you're doing. So you use a word that doesn't make sense within a sentence, right? You know what I mean? Like you use a word that's a safe word that makes you like come out of the headspace of like your intimacy. So you're like, whoa, because like if you're into non-consensual, consensual, non-consensual, you saying no isn't probably the right safe word because it's not going to take you out of the element. But if you say yellow or red, it's like, oh, that doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing. Wait, I'm paying attention now. What's wrong? You know what I mean? Miss Fisher says the whole point of the safe word is to use it. What the, why the fuck else would you have one? Lots of people think it's a punishment and they genuinely think like using a safe word is a bad thing. And I think you're having a bad relationship with safe words. Safe words are a beautiful thing. I love safe words and I think you should use them all the fucking time. Tuesday says if your partner is causing you to say it all the time, they are probably abusive. I don't. Th what are you imagining when you say that? Because that makes no sense to me. That's like me saying I shouldn't use my words to communicate because that could be a bad thing. Safe words are just communication tools, guys. Red is not a punishment. Red doesn't mean you fucked up. Guys, if somebody's fucking up, your safe words don't matter. If someone's abusing you, your safe words don't matter. Right? Like, what are you imagining in your head? You know what I mean? Safe words are communication tools. That's like saying you shouldn't say thank you too much because if you have to say thank you all the time, people are making you work too hard. Safe words are not punishments. They're literally just communication tools. What? Be that hard. And he disguised it as this really quirky part of our relationship and was so comfortable sharing it with his friends to the point that he would... Do it in these people are also young and immature. They're not ready to be in relationships, right? Because like they don't even know what's happening. How old was she when she had this relationship? She's 30 now, which is fair. Um, 30 was a very big life changer for me. So I'm not saying that he wasn't toxic, right? Right? I'm not saying they're not toxic. I'm just saying like nothing she said so far is telling me why they're toxic yet. Tuesday says literally this dude biting her too hand over and over and over. Like, why are we even like why even have a safe word? Yeah, like I can't tell. What's her actual problem with the situation yet? But it sounds like she also has no idea what's happening. This is when you have to call Brittany and schedule a how to BDSM slash just like actually create a safe word and use consent like in relationships because it's all a construct and you've got to make it specific to your relationship. In front of them, he thought it was this really funny story to tell. And 
but this isn't really a kink. She doesn't want to be bitten. Kink is like a mutual thing for sure. So it sounds like they're super incompatible. I wonder why they didn't just break up probably because they're toxic, right? Like you probably don't know how to have a, have a, have, you probably don't know how to have a healthy relationship. You know what I mean? Like why wouldn't you just break up? Hey, I'm really into biting. Oh, I don't really like biting. Okay. Broken up. But most people are dating to settle. They're not dating to fall in love with the one right? They're not trying to like be with their person for the rest of their life, right? They're just trying to date for clout or for sex or for connection or temporary, like whatever. A good bit to take my arm and bite me in front of everybody until I literally shout in pain. Hmm. Um, and then I have to laugh it off because I'm so embarrassed and I don't want to cause a scene in front of all of our friends. And I'm sure everyone was a little bit uncomfortable, but as long as I was saying that it was fine, Nobody really felt like they needed to be concerned and that's not anybody's fault because yeah. I was lying. <laughs> yeah. I was lying and it wasn't fine. Because That's hard. I get it though. To be fair to her, I didn't stop my toxic cycle till 30. So in her defense, she just turned 30. So I get it. But I knew it was toxic at the time. I was just trying to get us into therapy and trying to like, I was involving parents. I was trying to get people to help. So I already knew at 28 when I was in the middle of my toxic relationship, I was already trying to get like, I knew it was bad. She doesn't even know it's bad because she herself is probably too toxic to know. Like, so she doesn't have boundaries. She doesn't know how to advocate for herself. She doesn't, she's not having like the relationship she wants and doesn't know how to say that. She's worried about how other people are viewing her. Okay. Because I would go home later and I tell him how uncomfortable I was. Oh, how much I didn't. So she did talk to him about it. Okay. Props. Like being hurt all the time. And I needed him to really stop biting so okay, hard. Okay, okay. Good advocacy for yourself. Never mind. She advocated. Didn't like it. And I tried telling him over and over again because he no, was. No, that was the mistake. That was the mistake. You, but you learn that in therapy. Like you learn it in right therapy to put down a right boundary. Okay. Okay. So her mistake was like needing. You guys don't say it over and over again. Wasn't actually trying at all to not hurt me. Um, but he said he would try at first. And then he started saying things like it was my pain tolerance that was too low or Ooh. I'm exaggerating. Ooh, fuck him. How much it actually hurts. He's not even biting that hard. I'm, I'm being dramatic. Um, but his biting escalated to a point where I was covered in bruises all over my arms and they hurt and he would poke at them for fun. Okay, I'm not going to lie. So this is a bubbles thing. For her, it's unconsensual and she thinks it's like abusive, which is it is because she doesn't want it. Right? In a for like in a like in a healthy relationship? Yeah, like if my partner gives me a hickey, I want him to press on it. Cuz I like pain, I'm a masochist. Like if I get a hickey bruise from my partner, like yeah, I want them to press on it because I'm a masochist. And I'm going to press on theirs because like I'm, you know what I mean? Like that's a consensual kink relationship or a consensual, like that's how we are having a relationship. But if you're in a relationship where you don't want it, this is like torture. Guys, everything. Okay. What is the difference from sex and rape? The consent. Okay. The difference from sex and rape is the consent. Sex is great. And during rape, sex occurs. It's non-consensual. That's why it's bad. So in her situation, she doesn't want it. So it's bad. Okay. So she has, okay, every reason to not want this and not consent to it. And of course, it's going to feel crazy to have bruises and like have people press it. Of course, it's going to feel crazy because you don't want it. She should. What is she? She's dating a guy that she's not even connecting with. You know what I mean? And so again, like she needs to understand like, hello, ma'am, you don't even like him. You don't even like what you're doing together. Why aren't you breaking up with him? And she thinks, oh, I can fix him or the problem is him. I don't think it's wrong for him to want to do this. I think it's wrong that they kept pushing it and trying to make it work, obviously. Ingrid says, I think a lot of stunted autistic adults play Minecraft. And I think it's more of a correlation than causation. I do like trauma, neurodivergency. So many things are going to play a role in this, right? And he even felt so comfortable showing off my bruises that he had caused. Yeah, that's really common in BDSM circles. Again, if you don't want that kind of relationship and you want more privacy, um, you need to move out of that relationship. It's You're not compatible. 
And he's probably not responsible enough and you're not responsible enough to have that kind of level of relationship anyways. You're not even communicating with one another. Well, our friends, because he would bite me so hard by accident, by accident, he would even joke that it looked like he abused me. Um, and eventually he did acknowledge how bad it looked that I was covered in bruises all the time. So he stopped. Um, yeah, I just think like, again, I keep seeing all these very immature, very just young, uneducated people getting into very complicated relationships and not knowing how to do anything they're doing. And again, book a call with me, girl. I'll walk you through it. Not as a therapist, as a philosopher, because I'm not a therapist, girl. Your stuff for therapy has got to be your thing. But if you want to have a consensual relationship with your partners, if you want to talk about boundaries, if you should, like, I will tell you right now to break up with your boyfriend because you're not compatible, girl. Again, if you feel lost in your relationship, if you're spending your nights crying because you don't know what's going on in your own relationship, you're in a bad relationship. Not because the people you're in a relationship with are bad because you're a part of that relationship, but because you guys don't even know why you're there. Why would you continue to consent to a relationship that isn't working? Because you think you'll fix them. Because you think that's what love is. This is, this is all settling. You think this is your person? You think this is the love of your life? The person who doesn't even understand you enough to know you in detail? You think this is your person? Dump them. Biting my arms as often. And he started biting my legs instead. Um, and it was in the last couple of months of the relationship that every time he bit me, it was until I needed to use this safe word. Um, it had become his benchmark for when to stop. That's really common. That's, ex that's pretty common. That's what I'm saying. I bet this guy read a BDSM blog and thought he knew what he was doing. But that's the problem is like if your partner doesn't know what they're doing, then you failed as a BDSM partner. If you're in a BDSM relationship, and I don't know if that's what this is, whatever this is, you have to make sure you're on the same page. But yes, going until she safe words is pretty common. That's what a safe word is for. It's a really good tool. It communicates something. That's not bad. But if you don't want to go until you use the safe word, then you have to negotiate that. You have to talk about that, you know? Tuesday says, do you believe it's possibility that he's abusive and the part he likes is hurting her beyond her limit? Absolutely. Very possible. Absolutely possible. And I would say that um, lots of people are in toxic relationships and abusive because they're not introspective enough to think about doing things healthily. So I'm not saying that him having this kink can't be done in a healthy way, but I'm saying that he's probably not healthy enough to even think about having the kink in a healthy way. So he might have some malicious intent, like a desire to really hurt her that could be very, like, very much there. So obviously that could be very true, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Only once. I was definitely hurt, um, which meant I was being hurt every single day, um, multiple times a day. Discord says the dude is so stupid for interacting with a vanilla person when he thinks he's inexperienced. I bet he's vanilla. Lots of vanilla people are into choking and biting now. Guys, you know, um, Tree said this when she like alleged against me that I was doing kink stuff with vanilla people. Um, you know, vanilla people are doing kinky stuff. You know, vanilla people are doing choking and biting now. Like it's totally not. They don't even know about BDSM and kink. They just saw it in a vampire movie. They saw it in a novel. They saw it on Fifty Shades, but they don't think about it as BDSM. You know, vanilla people slap each other across the face. You know how many vanilla men, how many vanilla women I know who like getting slapped across the face? None of them think they're BDSM. None of them call themselves kinky. Maybe kinky, but not like kink. Kink is different than kinky. Lots of vanilla people are kinky. Not everybody practices kink, which is different. It's a different bubble. So when people are looking, like, guys, if I have sex with a vanilla person and I slap them, I'm not doing BDSM with them. If I slap my brother across the face, we're not doing BDSM. They're totally different contexts for the same thing that is a slap. Slapping is contextual. Biting is contextual. Everything is contextual. You think as siblings, we don't bite each other when we fight? Bro, we like, bro, we literally bite each other when we fight. We're like, get the fuck off me, bitch. Like, not everything is sexual. If you sexualize everything, like, that's such a, don't sexualize everything, you fucking horny bitches. Not everything is sexual. Now, in terms of abuse, okay, we have to, we have to understand that abuse happens 
sometimes maliciously and without intent. So then we have to have that conversation. But again, I think she didn't have enough understanding of herself to even remove herself from the situation, which tells me she's not healthy. Healthy people would have been like, hey, I don't like this relationship and you're treating me pretty poorly. I'm going to leave. Usually if you're recovering, if you're toxic, if you're dysfunctional, which we all are on a spectrum, your dysfunction keeps you in the situation. So the question is, what is her level of dysfunction? Because right now she's not taking any accountability for her level of dysfunction, which is actually the key that let her stay in this relationship in the first place, right? And that's the part that's the hardest to admit. That doesn't take away his accountability, right? It doesn't take away his accountability, but it really is the hardest part of introspection, recognizing how much of our life we've put ourselves, we are the reasons we're in situations. Not the reasons people hurt us. She's not the reason he hurt her. You know the difference, right? But she is the reason he had access to her because he, she didn't break up with him and she didn't leave the relationship until she did. So she allowed him access, okay? And he chose to hurt her with that access. And so that's the way that it's different. Uh, for all of the days that we spent together in person. And when I asked him to stop again, this time he said, this is who he is. He isn't going to change. Okay, break Those up. Those were... Break up with him. That's what he's trying to tell you. This is who he is. He's comfortable with that. Break up with him. His words. And I remember a lot of specifically his words about certain things, especially at the end. And by the way, he could be totally toxic and very abusive. And he doesn't sound like he has her best interest at mind, which tells me he's toxic too. Um, because I'm good at remembering words and especially his wording, I became really good at remembering because he was constantly contradicting himself. And I would notice, but most of the time it wasn't worth picking a fight over. And oh, that's your fault. But he would fight me on it sometimes because nah, I, would girl. I would point it out. And this is not the love of your life. This relationship is not the love of your life. If you're in this kind of relationship, break up. The love of your life is not going to keep you confused, worried, anxious, or crying into your pillow. Okay. Uh, he would insist that he had never said the thing that he said. He definitely did say. Oh, yep. Break up. Crazy. That gaslighting, uh-uh. Break up. Even if they don't mean to do it, they're too unstable. Break up. And then he would say something like, how are you so sure you're remembering correctly? Oh. Why are you always right? Um, and oh, he definitely well, said the things that I heard him say. I mean, right now, sh I'm just, break and up. And other people heard him say. So he had now at this point weaponized the safe word and was using it to ensure that I was hurt and on a constant basis. And he okay. I bet, okay, so this is how t they, they're not BDSM for sure, right? So BDSM, a lot of the bubbles use the lights, the light, the light B safe word system. So you can say green. A lot of people don't. A lot of people say yellow. Slow down. You're actually biting too hard. If you bite me again, I have to safe word red because like I'm getting to my limit. Or yellow, can you bite me harder? Yellow, can you bite me softer? Yellow, can you stop biting me altogether? It's too much. Yellow, can you bite me somewhere else? Yellow means slow down. We have to adjust something or I need to give you input on something. And again, my husband and I use that just in regular conversation. Yellow, I need to tell you something. Can you remember this for later? Yellow, I need to tell you I have something to put on the grocery list. Will you remember? It's like, it's basically helping you say, hold on, wait. Red means scene is over. Everything we're doing is over. Stop what you're doing, which is different. So if he is waiting for her to get to red every time, then yes, that's extremely emotionally exhausting. And I think that's a super, that's a red flag of somebody who doesn't know what they're doing in terms of safety practice, in terms of safe words. But again, if they're a bunch of vanillas and they don't know anything about what they're doing, you know what I mean? They're not going to do it correctly. God says, is BDSM inherently sexual? No. He was biting her like on the couch. Yeah, no, BDSM is not inherently sexual, but I don't think they were practicing BDSM. So n everything about the way she's telling the story tells me they're not practicing BDSM in a traditional sense. They're probably just like Googling like how to have a safe word in a relationship, which again, lots of vanilla people have safe words. Lots of vanilla people have movies and TV shows where they're like, let's have a safe word. The safe word is pineapple. That's very, very common. Okay. Wasn't sorry anymore. Um... I couldn't even tell you the last time he had apologized for doing it anymore because now sometimes he would bite me and I would yell out the safe word. Yeah, I would consider this physical abuse. 
I, I would consider it physical abuse on his end. And um, uh, something is wrong with her that she's staying. So the question is, what is it? Because your defunction, dysfunction makes you stay, right? So he's wrong. He's I definitely would count this as physical abuse. But then with him, with her, something is like uh, something is wrong with her. Like, why would you why would you what is allowing her to justify the action in her head? Like what what is allowing her to stay in the relationship? You know what I mean? Word, because it hurts so bad. And he'd clamp down even harder. Oof. And just for a second, just for good measure before letting go. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'd say the safe word and he'd grind his teeth down on my skin. Yeah. And sometimes he'd smile after. Um, yeah, he's either completely untrained or he's just like uh, pushing her boundaries to get away with something. So like he's, I would say that regardless of his intent, well, how old is he? Is he in his late 20s too? Either way, like I would say that he's very, like this is abusive to me. Yeah, I think this is abusive. Like a gloating grin. And during this time, I was filled with so much anxiety all the time that I was constantly nauseous. Yeah, I, I believe her. I think I'd be on edge all the time, too, if I was in that situation. Like, she should have left. And then the question is, what let her stay? Because really, the dysfunction is within us that makes us think, like, is this, like, the only thing we're worth? Is this the only love we deserve? Maybe if I change him, maybe if we get therapy, like, all this stuff. Gagging daily. Um, on occasion, throwing up because of the pit that was in my stomach. He was 27 at the time. So he was 27 and she was 28? Or he's 27 now? Yo, he can't be 27 now because she's 30 now, which means she's hella older. I never told him about that, though. Wait. I was going and running away quietly to throw, throw up in the toilet and rejoin our group of friends. Um, but I felt... Okay, first of all, this Willibur guy definitely has autism. Wait, he's older. She's older. She's older. <gasps> he was 25 and she was 28? That's even worse. Okay, he's definitely neurodivergent, right? He's got the most. He's. Man. Sh... Her dysfunction's insane, bro. She's three years older. Okay, yeah, but like. I mean, I get it. I was I was older than my uh, uh, last relationship for sure. Three years too. But like that's also I think maybe why she stayed. Like I kept thinking it's not that the age gap is crazy too. Don't get me wrong. Three years is not crazy. But it always there's always a picture that gets painted subconsciously in our heads that the dude is older. The dude is manipulating her. But in this situation, she's older and she stayed. Mm, 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 mm. I get it though I get it okay yeah 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 I've had relationships that are a few years younger for sure for sure for sure in my 20s absolutely like in general older younger as long as it's within a, a reasonable age gap though in my 20s I did date that guy who was 12 years older and that was red flag but anyways um yeah it's kind of insane so she stayed interesting Hmm, yeah, so she was the bottom in her relationship, which is fair, but she couldn't advocate for herself, even to somebody who was 25. That's interesting. Yeah, she's got, so she's got, she needed therapy before she started dating him is what I'm hearing. So unwanted and ignored. Um, and I would tell him that. And then he God says it's not abuse because she consented and never said stop. No, you can consent to abuse. People consent to abusive relationships all the time, right? Like, they absolutely do. But she, no, no, no. She did advocate for herself. He didn't mind to read her. She advocated for herself every time. No, 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 no. She did, after a party, say she advocated for herself and said, don't do it that way. So, no, no, no. She advocated for herself. She just, this was way beyond her, like, her ability. Like, this was just beyond her ability. I hope this relationship changed her life. I hope she radically acknowledged like how dysfunctional she must have been to put up with this bullshit. And also like, yeah, he is abusive. 
So like she she did communicate her limits to him. He would reassure me that he wanted to be together and he loved me. He loved me more than I loved him even. Ugh. He would always insist that that was true like that. I love you. I love Okay, you. if that's real real, then no. Like people like that's super like they're young, they're stupid. Like abort mission. I love you more, but he was like really serious about it. Um and looking back, I do believe that the way I was swept off my feet at the beginning of this relationship was 100% love bombing. Um, oh, so she's calling him a narky narc. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. I mean, he's like a 25 year old, like a 24 year old. When they started dating, how old were they? Probably 24, 25. How old, how long were they in the relationship? I mean, maybe, right? And we were friends for a time. Um, at least people would have thought that, actually. But I use the word friend very loosely because mm. um, we had actually never spoke to each other outside of group chats. We were in together when, like, a handful of times throughout the, the whole time that we knew each other. Okay, okay. Um, but did not talk to each other. So mm. I wouldn't have even called him my friend until he found out I was single, waited a few weeks to reach out, and then we started a friendship. And then that friendship turned romantic. And then he made these huge romantic gestures. He wrote me the most beautiful love letter that I had ever read. Um, he called me his soulmate. He talked about forever one month in. He told me- he But did you feel that way then? Because otherwise you're crazy for staying in a relationship where, like that's what I'm saying, like, but was that based off values or what was that based off of? Is he, she saying it's love bombing? Because love bombing is a very specific manipulation tactic. Or is he fuck boy? Is he a fuck boy? Because like love bombing is a very specific tactic with a lot of intent. He hadn't been in a relationship in five years. He thought he could never find love again before. Mm, I mean, all these are red flags to me. But like they're only red flags because um, they're not like communicating values. Like their values obviously aren't the same. So they're like children. They're children dating, which a lot of people do. They settle in these relationships because I feel he wrote me a romantic letter. Who gives a fuck about the letter, bitch? What's he going to do when a chick hits his fan? Obviously nothing. Very fuck boy of him. Ingrid says, nah, it's just autism. I mean, honestly, though, puppy love, maybe. Or he met me. He said he wanted to, someone to grow with. He wanted to be a dad. He had all his names picked out. And I didn't have a preference. Now all this sounded like fuckboyness. Because I, my feeling of it is if the timing is right and with the right person, I could. Um, but if that doesn't work out in time or the time, you know, I, I'm not super pressed about it. Um, she didn't even know if she wants kids. Girl, get your shit together. Um, but I started opening my mind up to the idea with him because it seemed so important to him. And... Man, this girl willing to settle on everything, man. She's willing to, like, fuck her. She doesn't even know who she is, girl. I kept trying to talk to him to figure out where he was later on when I could tell things, like, were declining. And um, now all of a sudden he's telling me he's not sure he wants kids at all. In fact, he has never been attached to the idea of kids. Bro, I could definitely see narc, but I could also see fuck a boy. You know, what's the difference? Um, and I told him that isn't what he said before. And he said he's allowed to change his mind. And I'm of the opinion that in a relationship, there are a few things that you are not actually allowed to change your mind without letting your partner know. I think that kids is one of them. I, it wasn't even important. So then why didn't you break up with him right there and then? Because you thought you could fix him? Because you thought this was the best you could get? Because why? I want to know the psychology. I'm not accusing you of anything. I've been there. I just want to know why you stayed. Because I stayed because I thought he just needed therapy and he'll get better. Nope. Just wasn't my soulmate. And wasn't a good person and didn't want to get better. But also, even if he had gotten better, we wouldn't have been compatible. We didn't have the same values. So, like, why did you stay? Important to me. Um, and I think marriage is one of them. So I brought that up next. Oh. And I asked if he still wanted marriage. He said he wanted to marry me. And then he said, now... I'm not the, quote, I'm not the commitment guy, you know. Yeah, he's a fuck boy. She got fuck boyed, bro. She got fuck boyed. It wasn't even like a toxic relationship. They were barely dating. They got, she got fuck boyed, bro. Who that? I didn't know that. 
why are you dating me? <laughs> in fact, he so was that the day you broke up with him? Like right when you heard him say that? Was telling me the exact opposite every day. Uh, he would tell me he still wanted to be together. He wanted to work on all of the problems. Discord says, how do you know if they're a fuckboy or if they're serious? It coincides with the values. It seriously shows an action. Families are involved. And you have to know yourself well enough to know. And you, you do have enough life experience to kind of tell in general what you're kind of dealing with. But she definitely got fuckboyed, bro. You know what I mean? JJ says, do love bombers actually know they're love bombing, like plotting? Or is it something they feel and then fades? No, no, no. Love bombing is a, is a concerted, intentional decision to overwhelm someone with lots of love, lots of like gifts, lots of love bombing to help them like focus on you and like fall in love with you specific. It's like a specific thing that's it's a manipulation tool. So so love bombing is probably get thrown around here a lot like narcissist. It's like it's not they don't mean literally. Right. But she definitely got fuck boyed, bro. He wanted to. Like he wanted me at the end of everything. He did not want to break up. He made that very clear. And uh, I have though caught him in lies before, but usually it was small stuff. And I, again, I didn't want to. I, Don't date liars. It wasn't anything that ever seemed worth rocking the boat over, uh, which isn't normal for me. I hate lies. Um, and yet I ended up lying for him. So, uh, but he had lied about big things. And he had also been caught lying by his friends numerous. Okay, hold on. I was once staying with my ex uh, at her house. I was supposed to be- This is the guy? Is she talking about, is he talking about, okay. Looking after it while her parents were out. On the very first hour that my girlfriend's parents left, I stepped out the door and shut it behind me. So um, essentially I called up a locksmith and he came round and he like examined the door and was like, okay, we're gonna need to drill it. So he drills into the evasive and I'm like, fuck. So he drills out the lock and for free, he replaces the lock for me and he gives me the new set of keys. And then my girlfriend's parents or my ex's parents had to had a nice surprise when they got back from their holiday and me being like, new keys for the house. I've changed the locks. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. What? So he's a bit of an ass, isn't he? A bit of an ass, isn't he? I don't know if that's about her. Or another story, but okay. This time, so this is something that he feels is acceptable to do, and everything reached a breaking point when he was about to leave for an extended period of time. We were not going to see each other very much. A few days out of every few months, um, and now suddenly he is dumping all of these problems that he has been having feelings about all of this time later. Um, at one point, he said he's been feeling this way a couple months. At another point, he says he's been feeling this way for six months, immediately contradicting, him, contradicting himself in the same conversation. And with no time to do anything about it, I arrive, the one of, <laughs> never mind, I'm going to get to something later, but uh, I literally arrived for three days for this conversation to happen and then leave. Um, Okay, so she flew my to cat him. Just woke up, and she's not usually awake right now. Hi, my love. It's really close. Hel Ma'am. Hello. Um. So no time to fix any of the problems all of a sudden because there are three days before he leaves, and he insisted he did not want to break up. He and so he was expecting lots of people do that. They don't break up because they're like too afraid to face it. But the fact that she didn't break up with him. Me to have a solution somehow magically. And I gave a number of solutions that would have a way forward for us to be together. But he refused to make any compromise um, whatsoever. So then I stayed because I have no self-worth. Girl, why did you stay? <laughs> and he said that the relationship was starting to feel like a responsibility yeah. towards the end. Also his words. Um, yeah, that makes sense. He's like 25. He's like, this is too much responsibility. Yeah, that's what love is, bitch. It's a responsibility to a whole other consciousness. So it wasn't a responsibility the whole rest of the time to him. And he yeah, she got fuckboyed, bro. She got fuckboyed. I hope she leaves. She better leave. He was at this point basically flaunting that he would never prioritize me over anything. Um, Oof. She didn't know him. 
G girl, you better focus. Um, and I wasn't even asking for literally even the bare minimum. I was asking for so I sped it up, girls. Little, and he, I was watching him give exactly what I was needing in the relationship, all over the place to anybody else who who just happened to ask and just wasn't me. So, um, and he also he was never going to prioritize me over anything that would give him more fame or money. In fact, okay. he said that himself. He, yeah. Uh, that was exactly why he was not going to compromise at all for a solution for us to be together because he said he wanted to see how much fame and money he could get. Um, okay. Very common in the entrepreneurial bubble. Break up with him. And I just thought we wanted to be together. I thought that's what we both wanted because that's what he was still saying he wanted to. Um, but then he also admitted to me that he had grown resent. Uh, he had grown to resent me. And I have to be thankful that he said that bit out loud. A lot of these bits he said out loud because that was the last push that I needed to get myself out. He had grown resentful, which I also pointed out that there was no reason, like there was no reason to feel that way. And he admitted that there was no reason for him to feel that way either. I think that it was because I'm someone who can communicate how I feel. Um, but I don't know. I think there, I have a lot of theories and reasons why I believe things happen the way that they did and why he was lying all of the time. Um, but he was resentful of me, was causing me physical harm every day, multiple times a day, despite me telling him over and over again to stop. He wasn't going to change. And he wasn't going to end the relationship. He was going to keep hurting me. And it was possibly going to escalate even further. So I broke up with him. And okay. I didn't even want to. Um, oh! I broke up with him and I didn't even want to. Ma'am! <laughs> Ma'am! I broke up with him and I was like, yes! And I didn't even want to. Ugh. What? I'm so sorry, earphone users. What? Ma'am. What? Because I couldn't even see for such a long time after um, what it really was that had happened, that he had used me. And You're so dumb. Oh my God, I love her so much. People are so dumb. Did you hear her? I couldn't even tell he was, you, you needed to break up with him. Not because he was abusing you, because you weren't even compatible. Wow, we're so dumb when we're young. Me too, girl. God, we're so dumb. I was so dumb in my 20s. But like, wow. So she didn't even want to break up with him. But then she realized she was being abused. So she should have broken up with him. No, you should have broken up with him the moment you weren't on the same page. Y'all, people settle so fucking hard, bro. Y'all settle so fucking hard. It's so sad, bro. God, I'm so glad I had my 20s that were so fucked up so I could have the best 30s of my life. My 30s are so good. I really recommend turning 30. She just turned 30, girl. Get your fucking shit together. Break up with him because you're not compatible. Who cares about the abuse? Oh my God. You should have broken up with him because you weren't compatible. In fact, we left things as we want to be friends and he can never imagine ne not speaking to me again. Um, and then he never spoke to me again. Why would you want him to speak to you? Why would you want him to talk to you? Uh, outside of like a couple of exchanges where I needed to ask for my clothes to be shipped. Um, so at least I got my clothes back. Uh, I had a whole closet full. However, uh, he did throw away all of my other things. Uh, without saying a word to me about it. Who cares? Fuck it. Move on. That's my, see, I'm so, this is, okay, this is how, I always talk about my husband and I joke about this, but like, God forbid, if we ever, because the only reason we'd get divorced is if we were abusive to one another. And God forbid we ever abused each other, right? Like, that's obviously not our goal. And we had a divorce. We're very much like, I don't even want your fucking money. Get the fuck out of my life. Like, we're very much like, I don't even want you. Go take my stuff. Leave me alone. I don't care. But other people, they're like, give me my stuff back. Anything to keep in contact with a person? No, thank you. I don't give a fuck. But I understand. In my 20s, I would have complained about the same thing. I would have been like, oh my God, he threw away my... Who cares, bro? Move on. It's just stuff. You know, move on. I don't even want anything that reminds me of you, girl. So like, I get it, girl. But like, mm-mm. Hundreds of dollars of things from my office were trashed without a word. And I didn't block him till 10 months later because... I wanted an open door still. I really thought I wanted to be his friend. Um, Yo. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't feel that way anymore. I do believe he was bottling up so many emotions uh, and he would never talk about how he felt. Um, I, I think he even, I mean, he did admit that he felt like he couldn't say it any sooner. Like there was just no possible way to say how he was feeling sooner than the absolute last possible chance. Like not even a chance because three days before he left. That was actually a lie too also. He didn't leave for another week after I left. He, he brought me in had this three-day conversation he was supposed to leave and then he stayed for another week before he left uh, with all of the friends that I was also meant to see but he had lied to me about the dates too. Um, 
But I do believe that there uh, that he was bottling up so many emotions that he was taking it out on me physically. I believe there was a moment where he knew that he didn't want to be in the relationship anymore. And instead of just ending it, he tried to push me away any way he knew would hurt me. And he knew all of the ways that would hurt Maybe. me the most. And he knew he was hurting me. There Maybe. was no way that he didn't know because of the safe word that he made. Uh, and he just didn't care. He was hurting me and he didn't care. And even looked like he was enjoying it sometimes. Um, mm. Maybe. And I can look back now and I can see all these instances that were really major red flags. Um, there was this one time that he pinned me down and asked me to try my absolute hardest to get him off of me. And I couldn't do it, obviously. And he said something to make the point that he was so much stronger than me that I wouldn't be able to fight him back. Fight back against what? What do you mean? You don't say shit like that to people? That's insane. Um, yeah, this is weird. I think it's too trauma. Like, nothing could be, like, all these conversations could be reasonable. My husband and I, oh my god, I'm always so, like, amazed at how weak I am when I try to wrestle him. But also, like, yeah, that's just, like, of course, every partner you're with, it's, like, people are so afraid of saying the obvious. But obviously, like, you're in a toxic relationship. But it's not just him. I want her to acknowledge some sort of responsibility. You know what I mean? In this, like, conversation. And I was also sexually assaulted by my first boyfriend, and he knew that. Oh. Um, Oh. He had stopped giving anything to the relationship. And he said that why was because he was just waiting for things to change on their own. Um, he said he also didn't have the time or energy anyway to do the things that I was asking for, uh, but then would constantly make any bit of time and energy for anybody and anything but me. Uh, and he would say he wanted more quality time. So then I would try to arrange things for us to do online because we were uh, long distance, but then he would complain that he doesn't want to spend all of his time on the computer anymore. Uh, and then we'd be there in person and all he wants to do is stay, stay inside, play games on his computer, watch movies. He doesn't want to go out. Um, yeah, this is just like a really toxic relationship and it's a bummer. It's also like a learning curve. I dated toxic in my 20s. It's a shitty part, but I also know that I would have dated toxic unless I was toxic. And yeah, I was a little less toxic than my partners. Cool. I still dated them. I still stayed with them. Ultimately, like that's the point is like until you're healthy enough to like move the fuck on, like you are participating in your own life. Like your life is a reflection of what you put into it ultimately that's just the reality and that's why I think like so many people are dysfunctional enough to continue cycles of abuse that they witness as children because we don't know better you know what I mean so the point is is like admitting that is so hard I want her to say out loud I continued to stay I continued to think I wanted to be friends with him but instead of demonizing him which is a part of the process right she's probably gonna have to demonize him for a couple years and then when she grows out of that I hope her healing turns into like okay how did I contribute to staying in this relationship or consenting to be in this relationship? And how do I not repeat that pattern the second time or third or fourth time? Okay. Like how do I make sure that I don't repeat a pattern of picking people that violate my consent? Because genuinely, like I do think there's a pattern of behavior. It's so obvious to me now that I'm dating somebody or mar married. Well, I'm not dating. I'm married to him. I'm married to somebody who so respects my consent. And um, that it's so different to me. Like, I cannot explain to you the difference of people's energy. But obviously, there are just, like, types of people that, like, they don't care about your consent. But not, not in the casual way old people don't care about your consent when they touch your hair. I don't care about that. I mean, like, in a, like, a, like, like a focused, on purpose, or even a neglectful way where they don't even remember you exist, you know? And so, again, now that I'm dating my part, now that I'm married to my husband... I realized like, oh, yeah, like you were I couldn't even imagine you violating my consent in such a big way. But I think that's because it would so go against his values, like it wouldn't work with the person that he is. But lots of people in different like different relationships with values are open to violating your consent in a way that feels justified to them, like someone who's saying who's someone like who's willing to cheat in a, in a relationship is open to dating the violation of a promise that they kept because of justifiable reasons in their head. A person who's willing to violate your consent in a physical way because they feel like they can push boundaries because they're, quote, close to you. A per Like, everyone has, like, again, if you can justify in your head bad activity, then that's the red flag to me. Like, that's the red flag. So I think the difference between the person I'm married to now and the people I've dated is, like, he doesn't try to justify bad behavior. He'll acknowledge it and we'll talk about it. We'll say, oh, that's bad behavior. Like in a video, if we're watching this girl, we'll be like, oh, that's bad behavior. But if somebody else was watching it with me, they'd be like, I can see why he would do that, though. Maybe she was a bitch. It's like, oh, you're willing to justify bad behavior because somebody was a bitch to you. That's why I say if you're willing to do things that are make you less of a virtuous person, less a part of your code of honor because somebody hurts you. 
that's the key to me. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying any of this next part to be mean. Um, he lived in filth like I have never seen. And I've seen neurodivergency, definitely. Neurodivergency, like filth is neurodivergency. Hoarding activities, ADHD, forgetting to shower, bathe, clean, autism, like ritual, not any, like not neurodivergency. Filth, this was the worst. Hoarding. Uh, he would spill things on the floor and never, literally never. I think so many gamer boys are neurodivergent and that's why they're disgusting. Clean them up. Uh, he What's that guy on TikTok who has like the grossest room ever? Ant infestation once um, and wasn't going to do anything about it because he said, he said, bugs are normal in British houses. Um, so I had to buy ant killer. And yeah, she's just like, she doesn't even understand the kind of person she was. She doesn't understand him at all. To be fair, she doesn't even understand herself. He wouldn't clean his bathroom for months and months and months, but would constantly complain about how bad it smelled. And I would tell him that's mold. It's mold. He complained about being tired all the time too, which I don't know if that was a lie or not, but mold will do that too. But he would insist that it wasn't somehow without having cleaned in months, but it's not mold. Um, when I met him, he was washing his clothes without detergent. Um, just he wasn't using that at all. And Lots of people do that. Lots of boys do that, especially. And I don't know for how long before I met him. He was just running it with water and then hanging it on his filthy kitchen cabinets. Um, and I felt bad. I felt bad because I felt- You wanted to be his mummy. Felt like he needed someone to help him learn how to be cleaner. I thought he just didn't know how. And I was- oh, Okay, okay, relatable into all of the struggles of his upbringing. And I was like, he just doesn't know how. Okay, relatable, relatable. Someone just needs to show him. Um, and then I found out that he said he doesn't clean at all when I'm not there because he just waits for me to get there to do it. And you didn't break up with him? But I get it because you didn't because you thought you could save him. If I just got him the help, if I just taught him to clean. Um, and I only found out about that after we broke up because he said it behind my back. Uh, I was doing all of the cleaning and laundry for him. Also, I had a separate bath. No, no, no. Nethstar says filth is neurodivergent and cleanliness is also neurodivergent. It's all apparently neurodivergent. No, no, they're different categories. We're all talking about different shades of blue, but we're talking about different shades of blue, right? So remember my categories? I'm talking about the neurodivergent category in which they are filthy and the neurodivergent category in which they are clean. And so it's different. So we're all talking about blue, but the distinction is which shade of blue are we talking about? Bathroom. I want to make that clear. I wasn't using that bathroom. I had a separate bathroom that I cleaned for myself. I had cleaning supplies. I don't think he even actually knew I had cleaning supplies in there. Um, but I had my own bathroom. Um, all, the, all the cleaning, all the laundry, all of it, I was paying for all of the um, like paper towels, uh, like soap. All of that only stayed in the house so long as I was buying it. Um, mm -hmm. I've been there, girl. I also dated the filthiest people in my 20s. I get it. Yeah. And they were all definitely neurodivergent and gamers. And honestly, I'm glad I broke up with them. And I'm glad I didn't repeat the pattern. But girl, you got to know why you repeated the pattern. And by the way, like, it's hard to acknowledge it because you have to realize, like, you're still willing to do it. What is it about your brain that is tolerating his filth? That's the most curious part. Fuck these boys. I don't give a fuck about them. You, girly, what made you stay? And she kind of said it just now. For me, it's this idea of like, I'll just fix them. They'll get therapy. They don't really want to be this way. You know what I mean? Drive, and there would just not be toilet paper in the whole house. There were paper towels instead. And who knows for how long, too. Um, I was paying for food more than half the time uh, because he would often push me into ordering food for us even if I had paid for the last meal or the meal before that. Um, and I'm of the opinion now that I shouldn't have been paying for any food. Um, none at all. But I wanted to at least, I thought I was being equal by at least doing like a. Yes. Junipero says when the messiness and cleanliness become dysregulated, de debilitating, disabling, hazardous, I would say that's neurodivergent. It's a spectrum. There are boundaries. And vi same with cleanliness. When it becomes like a very specific, like it has to be this way. Like, again. I think that this is like a really common story a lot of people will have in their lifetime and it should teach them to ask themselves, why did I stay? Because fuck why he did what he did. Why did you stay? Right? It's not to accuse you. I'm not accusing you of something. I'm saying, I'm saying you're going to repeat this pattern if you don't know why you ended up in it in the first place. Because it doesn't just happen to people. I mean, it does just happen, but it doesn't happen if the pattern can't be broken until we realize why we're there, you know, the back and forth. Um, 
but didn't they live in different countries were they living together they they were traveling back and forth to one another so this is his place that was really filthy and she would come and visit it uh i ended up paying for food more often than just going back and forth anyway and he would do this to his friends all the time too um mm -hmm. but i was also paying for every plane ticket and the cat sitter which see no 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 with my boyfriends in the past if we traveled we had to pay every other ticket I ain't gonna pay everything. I was already paying everything anyways. Girls who make money, boys who make money, y'all gotta talk about finances with your partners. And if you're not compatible, break up. Cost roughly the amount of a plane ticket to England. Um, and he never offered to help me pay after the- I would have told him like, you're paying or I'm not coming to see you. Every other ticket, either we're in this relationship or we're not. But that's what I mean, this isn't your soulmate. This is not your soulmate. If you're in this relationship, break up. A Couple of times he did come here to visit me because he paid for the flights that we would both take. Um, but that only happened twice at the very beginning. I have actually had a friend tell me that, that this is financial abuse, but I don't know enough about that to say for myself, but this is just toxicity through and through. Both of you are severely toxic enough to have been in this relationship in the first place. But I was telling him that I couldn't afford it, uh, all by myself all the time mm -hmm. because I was losing money. I was never He's able- He's obviously more toxic than her. I would say she's less toxic than him. He's much more toxic and abusive, 100%, but she's toxic and dysfunctional enough to be in the relationship. But I would say he's obviously more of the issue. But obviously, who cares about him? Why were we even interested in guys like this, girl? Well, to work properly there. And he wasn't traveling at all to see me anymore, even though he said he would. Uh, that was like the basis of our entire relationship starting <laughs> off. Um, so then he agreed to pay for the cat sitter so that it would be basically paying half the cost of my travels. Um, and he did that once. And then never did it again, uh, despite many more months of dating. Uh, and I was traveling often. Um, mm -hmm. I had to because he was worried that we weren't spending enough quality time together. And then all of the time that he would have ever extra, he would choose choose to not spend it on me because there was an available choice and he chose not to spend it with me often. Um, and I did everything short of just up and move there, which I was willing to do the whole time. And I told him that I was willing to do it. Crazy. You were going to move country for a relationship that's shit, bro? Like, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. Like I said, I definitely think he's more abusive and awful and toxic, but like she's dysfunctional enough to have been in this relationship. It's dysfunctional. It just sucks. If you're in this relationship, break up. This is not your soulmate. Your soulmate, not going to make you work this hard, kids. But also, um, uh, did he ever make a reply? I tried to look it up. I didn't see a video from him. And he knew, uh, but he insisted that I don't. He insisted not to. He was planning to move here. That was supposed to happen first. Um, and then at the end of the relationship, he said, maybe things would have been different if I lived there. If I lived there. Uh, like I had said I would the whole time and he insisted I don't. Maybe that could have saved the relationship. Um, and I say all of this because I believe that people like this are genuinely dangerous. I believe he is dangerous. Um, he was willing to lie. He was willing to do harm to someone he claimed to love more than anyone he has ever loved. Uh, his actions escalated. Um, and I don't think that I'll be the last person that he hurts. Uh, and I felt like sharing my story was really important to warn people. Um, I want people to see the signs that I refused to. I want you to listen to your body um, and get out as soon as possible. Tell your friends the truth and let them help you. <laughs> um, I really thought I, I couldn't, because I had been sexually assaulted in a previous relationship, I just thought I was so much smarter to never. And I was like, if someone ever laid their hands on me, I'd leave immediately. It would never. I mean, yeah, relatable, right? It happens. But you continued a cycle. You, you have a pattern. Never happened a second time. But you, you just, it just kind of happened so slowly over time and got worse and worse and worse until the point where there's no way to deny the fact that he was hurting me and he knew and, and didn't care. That's just the kind of thing that I keep repeating to myself when I'm like, mm. but was it bad enough? What, it wasn't violent enough. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I was being hurt multiple times every single day, days and days and days and mm -hmm. days for a month at a time in a row. Uh, and I'm not even speaking on most because I did touch on other things, but I'm not even speaking on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is super relatable. Like I said, I think when you're dysfunctional, you just these are a lot of your relationship stories. And that's why you got to stop having these relationship patterns. If you notice everyone around you is toxic or you keep running into cycles, like congratulations, the powers within you. You can change this pattern of behavior by looking inward. You can't fix him. He's fucked. He's got to work on himself. But you, you can fix you. And you got to fix yourself good enough not to pick these men most of the other things that in my opinion i do think that there are some things that are across a line that make you a bad person i don't think that most people can be defined in a black and white you're good or you're bad mm. but i do believe that there's a line that you can cross and only bad people will do the things on the other side of that line you know what i mean oh. um and i watched a couple of things cross that line and i just i i truly feel now that my soul is so healed 
Um, I am light years beyond him. Uh, this was the last thing that I felt like I needed to do. That's my cat. Um, before I could move forward and hopefully never talk about him ever again mm -hmm. outside of maybe mm -hmm. my stories that I want to tell about other shitty things he did anonymously mixed in with the other stories I still have of shitty things that shitty exes did. Nope, move on. Stop talking about this man. Stop making him a main character in your life. Because I think it's important for us to share our stories and our experiences. I think it's important. That's fine. That's fine. Important for all of us to know that we deserve so much better than this. Um, Nobody deserves anything. You don't deserve better than this. Nobody deserves anything. Deserves is entitlement. You're not entitled to anything. Unless you negotiate for that sort of expectation of behavior, which you can call an entitlement. You don't deserve anything. What do you deserve? Who says who? Do good people deserve things? Do people deserve things? Mm -mm. And I think that if people don't want us to talk about the shitty things that they do, then they shouldn't do shitty things. Um, and this just felt so important to share. I always wanted to share my experiences. I always will. Um, and that's kind of it. That's, that's the end of everything I prepared. Um, hmm. I reserve the right uh, entirely to change my mind later and tell every story I want to. Um, but for now, that's all I really have. I feel like for my soul, I want to speak on because I think that this can help other people. I think that it can help other victims. Um, I have already talked to a number of... I only cry now when I'm talking about my friends who also dealt with such shitty things from shitty people. Um, but I'm also so, so grateful for all of my friends who were through, uh, with me through this whole thing and my friends who also were experiencing similar similar sorts of situations um at the same time sounds like you got a toxic group of friends bro i mean we kind of went through it together like i get it it's very popular listen if all your friends have abuse stories you guys gotta look at yourselves this is about philosophy not the law goth goth mentioning the law fuck the law i'm talking about philosophy it's a philosophy channel I'm talking about philosophy introspection okay pay attention to your friends pay attention to your life your friends can have different values than you but do you make sure people know like that's my friend that's not me that's my boyfriend. That's not me. But also, why are you dating somebody like this? Right? Like, she is dysfunctional enough that I'd be like, don't date her. She's not healthy enough to date at this time. But maybe one day. Right? Like, maybe one day. But, like, this girl who she is right now, she's not ready to be someone's wife. She doesn't even know herself. She has no idea what her values are. She's just discovering them. She, has, she needs a lot of time to grow, which is beautiful. Maybe a year. Maybe two years. Maybe ten. So, um... I think they are the strongest people in the whole world. And they made me feel like the strongest people in the whole world today. Did I call myself people? I'm in person. I feel like the strongest people. That's <laughs> nice. Again. I feel like the strongest person. They made me feel so brave. I felt impenetrable. This is a part of the recovery cycle. So no, I'm not shitting on her. I'm just letting her know like, hey, girl, if you're still blaming him, <laughs> wait until you start. <laughs> Blame is not helpful. Blaming him or blaming you is not helpful. If you want to actually recover, you got to know why you did what you did trouble today um but i am gonna go now because my friends are coming over and <laughs> we're immediately gonna go become distracted by watching love is blind i already watched all of it already and i don't care so thank you oh, love is blind a show of toxic settling people um, for listening who on occasion is okay oh okay so she showed his his text but i just grabbed his twitter instead because i think that'd be better so this is his twitter it says, in the past week, a series of allegations have been made over my conduct from an ex-girlfriend. I want to emphasize that although I feel it fair to offer my pers I want to emphasize that although I feel it fair to offer my perspective, this person's feelings are completely valid. I've taken my time sharing these statements and I as I want to process, as I wanted to process and respond respectfully. And with the hope to gain a deeper understanding for the situation during our relationship's final moments, I regrettably became slobbish, disrespectful, and selfish. These actions caused a lot of pain to my ex-girlfriend, and I've since sought therapy to address these behaviors, making significant lifestyle changes to rectify my past actions. I've come to realize how much my past behavior hurt this person, but I truly, but I truly compassionately believe I've made great strides from the person I once was, and hope I can continue to grow and improve on this tra trajectory. Ugh. The allegation of abuse, particularly in the form of biting, deeply shocked me. Throughout our relationship, I understood from our numerous... Uh, conversations and texts exchanged on the subject that this behavior was consensual, playful, and reciprocal, reciprocally enjoyed. I, tr I truly believe these, oh my God, I truly believe those personal message exchanges reflect mutual affection and understanding. Out of respect for her, I chose not to publish them and emphasize my perspective is not shared to diminish or invalidate anyone's feelings. Instead, I shared in hope that I can offer a genuine, fair, and relevant insight into my understanding of the situation. Ugh, this is such a lawyer speak. While I may perceive our interactions differently, I recognize that this person has processed and expressed feelings of hurt. I want to extend my sincerest apologies for any pain that I caused. I fully, 
I am fully committed to understanding and addressing her concerns going forward. I hope my perspective sheds light on these situation on this situation without detracting from its message. I'm dedicated to earning and maintaining the trust of those around me and hope I continue to be held to those high standards I wish to attain and maintain. Mm. Okay. Um, oh, he sings. Is that his thing? Yeah, I'm not in this bubble. I have no idea what's happening here. Okay. Um, three million followers. Jesus Christ. All right. I feel like they're both toxic and they were in a toxic relationship. She's less toxic than he is. But ultimately, uh, until they stop blaming each other and until they really face themselves, like they'll both continue cycle of abuse and they'll probably end up in other toxic relationships or single. I don't really trust his messaging as proof that he's gotten better or wiser. But, you know, who am I? And then I don't really think she is on the other side of this yet. I think she's still in the middle of healing and she's probably going to need some more time to do that. Um, and she's got to start by not blaming him because if you really um, understand that this is about you, it's always about us. It's not about other people. I mean, it's about them. If you want to legally go after him, sure. If you want to say like he's shitty, don't date him, sure. But ultimately like why you chose him is much more of an interesting conversation to have with the self. Why did I choose that relationship? Why did I choose to stay in that friendship? Man, why did I pick that job? Why do I even like this music? Why do I even like anything? That conversation is a much more important conversation to have with yourself to break patterns of bad behavior and picking bad partners. So honestly, like I'm glad we watched it and everything, but it seems like all the couples we keep reviewing are very immature, very uneducated in terms of their own psychology, their them themselves, they're lacking introspection 100. So like with peace and love, for the people who sent me these stories and wanted me to cover them, I don't know these people, but I know toxic when I see it and I know dysfunctional when I see it. And that's what's happening. So the question is, can they get better? Absolutely. How do they do that? With a desire to really want to be better. And that's much harder. That The desire to actually be better is so much harder because a lot of people just want to like paint their houses. Like It's like having a shitty mold problem in your house and instead of getting rid of the mold, you paint over it and you're like, fixed. That's what a lot of people end up doing. They paint over the mold instead of getting rid of the mold because getting rid of the mold, is just cost too much and they're not willing to do it. But man, if you can do it, you'll feel so much better after. You'll stop getting sick. You'll stop having problems. You'll feel like a weight has been lifted. I see it so much, especially on YouTube. I even see it with my past content. You can't see it now, but there used to be a stage in my life where I broke up with partners and I thought, I was better, but I went back to those relationships and I could see that I was still in the cycle of toxicity within myself because I was I was still thinking I could save him. I was still thinking I could make it better. I was still thinking I could save everybody. And then I realized like the only person I got to save is myself and everybody, all I can do is give them the tools to save themselves. The only tool I want to give you is the tool to save yourself. I don't want to save you. And I don't think you should save other people. I think you should give them the tools to save themselves. I just think a lot of us think, if I just have a relationship, it will save me. If I find my soulmate, they'll save me. My soulmate and I don't save each other. We give each other tools to save themselves. Even as like we're too, we've done enough therapy on our own. We've done enough introspective work on our own to know like no one's going to save anybody. We're just simply going to give each other tools to save ourselves, you know. Personally, that's my opinion. You can agree to disagree. You know, you can, you can agree to disagree. Um, okay, let me see. Michael says, I don't think his tweet was, I don't think his tweet was good, but is there an example of the right way to respond? Um, it's really difficult because it matters who you're talking to. I don't think it was the wrong way to respond in terms of a public statement. It was pretty good in terms of like true introspection and actual change. I don't see any change in that message. I just see someone playing lawyer and trying to sound like they've changed so again, when you say like, is there a right way to respond? It depends on your goal. If his goal was just to give a, a really good public PR statement, it was super good. Very good. If he was trying to show that he's changed as a person, he probably hasn't. And that's probably why he can't show that, you know? And that's what it is. Ultimately, I think in toxic relationships, people could be equally toxic or there's usually someone who's more toxic and the person who's more toxic gets more of the responsibility. But I think ultimately, and though I think that's reasonable and I agree with that, I think ultimately when we're doing introspection work, 
we got to put the responsibility on ourselves to know why we stayed in bad relationships or to know why we're continually or continuing cycles of abuse or to know why we're not doing more with our life or in, or having a different relationship with our life. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jelly Bane? Okay, now, let me see. Like it was a fool. 